You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because- That look good. I got big energy every day. Let's go! And he is dicked. Blind squirrel finds a knife every once in a while. That's right. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Well, come on, Herbert. Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Well, well, well. Hey there, folks. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm staring you down. Welcome to the visual Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog. Sitting with me are two <laughs> very gorgeous brothers. <laughs> starting first with Kevin Huggin Duggan. It's me. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. Nice to see you. <laughs> What's up, uh, what's oh, up you my good. brothers? Oh, my and man. let's not forget, folks, Kyle, the coach Duggan. Yeah, I got to <laughs> apologize in advance for any nose picking or beard rubbing. Or We're, this is a or new picking your territory, territory for rubbing us, it folks. in your beard. One of the two. Beard <laughs> drinking, all of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, last week we did like a test run and I was like this the whole time. I was like, <laughs> yeah, so folks, I'm, I'm sorry. The training wheels are off. There's a good chance we might bite it somewhere coming. down yeah. there. Yeah. We are totally gonna just go for the gold on this one. But hey, you know what? We're only doing this because you guys brought us here. We had a thousand subscribers. Thank you to every single one of you that subscribed. Yeah, round of applause. Pat yourself just on a, the back. Just folks. for you guys. Thank you. You're looking at this ugly mug because you wanted <laughs> yeah, it. So you did this to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy all of this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so not only now do we have video for you guys to watch us on YouTube, uh, we also have another big, big piece of announcement. Uh, it, it's it's so fresh. We we just finalized everything today. Uh, right now, the official Los Angeles Chargers podcast of the Fan Sided Network is us, folks. You're looking at uh, us. The we are part wow. official Charger podcast. The Fan Sided official Charger podcast, part of the Minute Media Podcast Network. Whoa, whoa! Like, <laughs> thank you. Thought? Honestly, thank you guys for listening because this would not be possible without you guys. Absolutely, <laughs> and being interested in listening to us idiots talk for an hour and a half to two hours every day. We, we made sure that before joining any network, we got to stay the goofy buttholes that we are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that, <laughs> that episode get, title. I'm putting that one down. That one's almost goofy there. Buttholes. Goofy, goofy buttholes. buttholes. That's us. <laughs> There's nothing, absolutely nothing will change. I still hate Dean Spanos and all of the above. So we're not going to change a thing. We just, now we're, we get to be, the, and it's sick. They have like Bolt Beat. Everyone knows Bolt right. Beat's website. That is part of Fan Sided. And that's what we're now a part of. We are of, now a part of that family. We have been brought in. Incredible. Like like the Coleone family. You come in here, you are now a part of the fan sided <laughs> Minute Media Podcast. Oh, you fool, oh, you gorgeous. I'm right so out excited. Of I'm so excited for people to see your face morph as you do your I faces. am not. So let's uh let's stop talking about this and let's look at what's going on uh around the league. Uh there's obviously been plenty of news. Uh Kevin preempted us, letting us know this is gonna be a beefy episode. Beefy. So Prepare your buttholes, folks. It's about to happen. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's about so, to be goofy. <laughs> uh, let's start it off with a tweet. Uh, this came from Ian Rappaport, who tweeted, While negotiations are ongoing between the NFL and the NFLPA regarding this offseason, the expectation is that there will be some on-field work, passing camps, and OTAs this spring. Sources say health and safety protocols will be paramount, but the plan is for some in-person work. That would be awesome. But you know what? That was shortly followed by the following tweet we have hmm. from Tom Pelissero. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, yeah. Let me let me scroll down here. Let's see. This. I mean, it, it has to be good news, right? Yeah, Let's it must see. be. Let's see. The NFL PA president, J.C. Treader, told players on a call today the union is pushing for an all-virtual offseason. Hmm and would urge players to boycott if teams conduct in-person OTAs this spring, per sources. Said Treader, we've been telling them it's voluntary, and we're not going to go. Ooh. Bro, what is going Friction. on? 
We need to get Friction. in person. Like, why would I don't understand it, man? I don't understand you. If you want to, you need to try and get in front of your brand new coach. You got to get together. You got to practice. I just more of this off, you know, virtual off season. I'm just not. I'm so bummed that this might be well, the thing again. Yeah, I think that. Okay, this is not just the Chargers. This is a whole NFL, right? So yeah, correct. From the Chargers perspective, it's yeah, we want to get in front of our coach. We want to be able to spend time, start to gel, and that's probably how our players feel. The NFLPA has they don't care about the Chargers. They 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 care about the players as a whole in the NFL. Um, and so it sucks for us. Um, but you you can you can kind of understand like they don't have a whole lot of leverage on owners. They don't have a whole lot of leverage on the league. If this is one thing they have, they're going to try to take advantage of it as best they can. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know, man. It it it's, it does suck to see the back. Anytime we see the back end deals of the NFL, it's just like this is stupid. Like you're I just you guys are playing football. I just Go feel play like football. I want to play football. I'll come. I'll come to practice. Whenever there's like a I'll back and in. forth negotiation like this, I feel like us as Charger fans always get screwed over. It's like the Bosa negotiation. Like anytime a, a any kind of negotiation, like we're just always on the wrong end of the deal. So I don't know. I well, wanted now to the go entire th- NFL is. I know, but <laughs> I'm just I, I don't know. I'm just bummed out about that. But hopefully they can come to some kind of agreement and they can get in there and start working in person. And, you know, right. God, I hope it happens. Yeah, it, it would seem that we're at least trending in the right direction as far as COVID and everybody is getting vaccinated. And I won't say everybody, a lot of people are getting vaccinated. And obviously the health and safety of the players should always be right. a priority, especially when it comes to uh, off season, you know, uh, voluntary uh, OTAs and stuff like that. So um, hopefully, I mean, we'll, we just got to wait and see, see how it all turns out. Well, I mean, everything has been that, pushed back right now. Like that's what kind of sucks though. It's like, they are OTAs. They're optional. Mm-hmm. NFLPA, but out like what yeah. are you talking about it's an they, optional they don't have to go yeah. if they don't want to go but we're, we'll we're see boycott- what teams show up yeah we're boycotting this option that you have to do this if you want to like <laughs> yeah. what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about no, it's kind of, like, <laughs> it's true. if our guys want to come practice let them I don't understand Derwin James lives at the facility as he's it is. already doing it <laughs> right? he's already there you know? he shows up to the he shows up to the building and it's just locked you can't yeah. come in Derwin sorry yeah. your uh, NFLPA won't let you walk into the facility Thanks. <laughs> it's just him and like 25 coaches at OTAs. Yeah. He's getting coached by Might everyone end up on being the staff. That. <laughs> Might end up being that. Him at the same time. I love that. Yeah. So uh, Derwin might get a hell of an OTA this offseason. Everybody else uh, remains to be <laughs> Derwin's seen. Derwin's OTAs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that should be his podcast, Derwin's OTAs. So yeah. uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, there's still, there's still time for things to occur. And as everybody's mentioned, it is optional. So... Just, you know, if it's optional, then it's optional. Leave it that. Leave it at that. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Um, this other little hefty tidbit that came across uh, recently was pointing out that Mike Williams is the only player left on the roster from the 2017 NFL draft for the Chargers. So uh, as we will talk about here shortly, Forrest Lamp is gone. Dan Feeney is gone. Rayshon Jenkins gone. Desmond King has been gone. Uh, Sam Tebby gone and Isaac Rochelle gone. But all they most of these guys are gone this in, off season. In the la- but in, in the last like month, all of, they right. cut their entire 2017 NFL draft class. That's all right, crazy. what does this mean? What does this mean? Does this mean we had a bad draft, or does this mean as a Chargers organization we're gonna get every last dime out of rookie contracts and then move on if they're not pro bowlers. I think it's a combination of that and the fact that we have a new coach in here and is looking at some of these guys' skill sets and is like, mm-hmm. this doesn't fit really what we want to do. And if we got to pay these guys or go get some some new ones, let's go get some new ones that fit more yeah, of what we want to do. Probably a comp. I, I bet Craig um, is saying that it was just a bad draft. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go. so let's go after the first round is pretty poor because that's, that's been, and not just Craig, that's kind of been the take on Telesco this whole offseason is mm-hmm. why did we get rid of our coaches and keep Tommy T? Um, so th- I'm excited. This draft is big. It's going to be big for um, Telesco's future here in the, with the Chargers. This ship Absolutely. is like, this ship is being course corrected in this draft. So they they have to hit it because we we're, we got rid of so many people. And we've always been, everyone talks about like, you need to build from the draft and ke- cultivate your guys and keep them on the team. And we cut out this right. whole this whole squad. So this is a huge moment for our franchise to take a step forward and start being like contenders every year. And this is 
this is a big draft. Nine picks, like this, we mm -hmm. have the ability to really step our, you know, step it up if we can do well in the draft. We 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 resign more undrafted guys than resign guys from the 2017 draft. Facts. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <Yikes. clears throat> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, it's uh it's a lot of I mean, there's the, these guys weren't necessarily bad players. Like they just did they didn't fit the Clearly, scheme. they're on they're still on roster. Every right. one of them still on an NFL roster. Right. Most of them yeah. went to Indianapolis. So and they're <laughs> so they've been uh we'll see. We'll see how it goes. That's fine. We take from Green Bay, they take from us. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, as mentioned, uh Forrest Lamp uh was uh signed to the Bills. He left us, but boy, Ian Rappaport just gave out a what was this? A was this a tweet. dig? Like <laughs> I don't it was this like, it was, was this it was a video of this kid wearing like a lampshade and lamp walking shade, around yeah. the house with it and running into the oven and falling down. That yeah. was what like, he posted what is, for Forrest Lamp what, signing with the Buffalo he, what Bills. Is, what is he trying to say? Like know. that Forrest Lamp is just a goober that runs into ovens. And I can't love Lamp play football. I don't he know. Loves, I love Lamp. Lamp. I don't know. I don't know. It's not often that you can find a GIF that's relative to a player's name and just have guess, a fun. Yeah, yeah maybe silly. he just he he searched his GIF app Lamp and that's the first thing. There that you came go. Up. It's like, I'll that say again, it was <laughs> perfect. Yeah, Lamp it jokes. Works. They, they were always before. fun. They were always fun to make. So I'm kind of bummed that that's gone for us. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, good that's luck, true. Lamp. Yeah, his Lamps Plus uh, luck, Lamp. deal is probably not going <laughs> to go on for much longer. Uh, yeah, Buffalo market's a little bit smaller than the L.A. market yeah, for little, Lamps. Just a pinch. Yeah, it won't be Lamps Plus. It'll be Lamps RS or something like that. <laughs> um, anybody that keeps an eye on the Chargers uh, YouTube or Twitter or even Facebook saw that uh, Brandon Staley had himself an interview, um, hour-long interview, lots of questions that were being thrown at him because uh, we're all trying to figure out, you know, what is the plan? Like, what is the goal here, Staley? Like, we understand we let a lot of these guys go, some guys that we were expecting to kind of hold on to, maybe for cheap contracts, and we didn't. So the question is, there's holes all over the over the roster, and so some guys asked some great questions. Uh, the first question we'll take a look at here was Brandon Staley talking about the left tackle position. Uh, he said, we wanted to become a bigger team, Staley said. There's certainly a hole there right now. It's going to be certainly a position that we need to address before July, Staley said. And as you know, there's a lot of different ways to address it within the draft, free agency, trade. There are certain characteristics at that position that are important. I just, I love hearing him talk because I just, it's so... <sighs> So he's so clear. He's so he's not trying to hide behind, you know, hide behind anything. It's just he, mm -hmm. it, it's a train of thought. He doesn't stop. He just like immediately like, bam, like we need to find somebody by July. This is an issue. This is a place of, you know, we need to really focus on. And it's a concern. Like it, it, it was it was a non bullshit answer. It was like legit. And mm -hmm. I really appreciated that. Yeah, there wasn't any stumbling. It was just he uh, he's not. It doesn't feel like he's trying to cover too much up. Obviously, he doesn't want to give away the full game plan because that screws it up for the draft, but acknowledges the fact that, yes, left tackle is a need, and uh, and when you get a tackle, you need somebody that can tackle. Like That is their primary goal. It is telling. I think everything that he said in this whole interview, including what he talks about in the tackle position, it to me, right now, I'm so, and I think the whole fan base is so draft- focused right now that everything he said i was like oh what does that mean for the draft yeah. oh what does that mean right this? like exactly when he's talking about we needed to get bigger he was talking about in free agency they brought in six foot five inch abushi to play guard which right. is a monstrosity Monster. of a guard yeah you know so it's like you, you you hear him talking about getting bigger which yeah we we did get a lot bigger from just our free agent signings but then you think this left tackle void of the how big your players are the left tackle is usually the biggest boy on your whole line yeah mm -hmm. so it, it it does start to filter through what he's looking for as far as this draft coming up what is his i who is his ideal guy um to take there for that left tackle position and if one of those smaller guard tackle hybrids that might not be what he wants you know like mm -hmm. he's not looking for a guy that can do a lot of things as as much as i want i want to be a big physical 
strong team up front. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and that's that he like answered so truthfully and in depth with all of these questions that I'm now more confused than I than I think I was going. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, because we all have our uh, you know our theories and what we think is going to happen. But then when he starts talking about how he's like comfortable with Tillery, he, he some of these you know Nasir Adderley, he's he likes what he can bring to the table. You know, it's like, huh. That wasn't my impression going into this press right. conference, but we'll see what he thinks. Exactly, because I think because he even addresses that when he was talking about Tillery. Um, because when he made the comment, he was like, "I understand that a lot of people are looking at the um, what was it? it was the sack uh, total, yeah. you know, for right. Tillery? Because that was the expectation for him was to to do that to yeah. sack. And they're like, I, you know, a lot of people are looking at that, but he's like, but." When I look at it, look when I look at it on tape, I'm seeing some other things, and that's you, you're hearing from a guy now that has a vision for this player to utilize him maybe more correctly than he ever has been in previous games. He uses adjectives for Tillery that I've never heard another coach use. You know, like even in the draft, they were talking about how he could be a great. Uh, pass rusher up the middle, but not really a uh, run stopper. Couldn't really do a whole lot of that. Like even when we drafted him in the first round, that those were kind of the knocks. But the way that the coach Daly was talking about him, he's like, he's a gritty, like hard worker, like all those types of things. I'm like, I, I, I've never like. I, I obviously I'm not there at practice. I don't get to see it. All I do is watch games on Sundays, and then I'll watch a a, a replay of it for our podcast. But like I don't. I don't see it as in depth, maybe as his and his position coach looked at it and the way that they talk about him. They're very clear that he's not an edge guy. Um, he is an interior defensive lineman. Um, but all of the things that he said about him were, were very, very high. Like he did not, he did not try to shy away from the question whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He was very adamant that he, he, he sees a lot in Tillery. Like the thing, the thing that I took away that was the most interesting on, on what, <laughs> what coach did is like he came in and he was telling everybody guess what like we're going to change the nomenclature here it's we're not calling him a, a defensive end anymore we don't have any defensive end we have edge players we have edge players he kept saying it over and over and over again and i was right. just like all right coach you're teaching us teach us up a little bit what are we calling our guys now yeah he seemed to be having a lot of fun with that like yeah. it's edge edge right get and it right even the, <laughs> even, even the reporters it. were like even the reporters were like Thanks for going over that with us. Like, oh, I love it. Let's do it. Like, let's let's keep let's keep learning. Yeah, yeah. that was one that one was of cool. the reporters. And that which would have been me if that was the case. I would have been like, uh, what right. star and money? Like, what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> what star I, and money? How, how, how much are you paying these guys? What, What's the what star, star position? Is <laughs> it <laughs> so a so, shooting star? Yeah. What yeah. is that? Um, so yeah, it was great interview. Other other things that he talked about uh, reference Trey Pipkins and. Uh, was a good answer. Uh, Staley talked about Trey Pipkin, said he flashed. Okay. That's, that's you know, he showed a lot moments. of things flash. Right. Yeah, yeah, there, there's, it's like you know, real quick. You like get a peek <laughs> yeah. and then it goes away. Yeah, you know what like, I mean? You feel me? <laughs> hey, guys, I'm here. No. Yeah, is that like that? See, that's a flash. That's what he does. So, to, that's what he does to edge players. <laughs> hey, I'm right. here. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Hold it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in reference to Trey Pipkin, said he flashed. Uh, the good thing is you've been evaluating him out there in the fire in regular season games. So there's real life action. You're not just watching practice film or preseason. So I think we've been able to address, okay, this is where this guy's game is. This is where he excels. This is where right now he needs to improve. And all right, this is his vision moving forward. We're going to try to figure out where he fits best, but he's a developing player. That's it's good soft wordage there. A developing player with a lot of good traits for the position. And now he's uh, got to get with our coaches and be able to mold his game between now and July. So I so think Daly does not hold punches. No. He, he's no. very direct he's, with what needs to happen. And he's trying to soften it as much as he can by saying, right. you know, like he's got some good qualities and he's got some areas where he needs to improve. And he's right. a developing player. But he didn't. He didn't say that about Tillery. Tillery he was very blunt. That's, with, no, this guy's it's a clear. Baller. That's so he's not just saying that about everyone, just to like every right. guy on my roster is gonna be great. It's like he was clear. Yeah. And I, what I took from this was like it's everything we kind of worried about. It's like we reached for yeah. we reached for him. Mm -hmm. And he was he wasn't gonna be ready. And you know, will he be ready by the time his first contract's up? 
and if these coaches are amazing, maybe they can coach him up and, you know, maybe but he could be a guard. I like, I don't know. That's the thing is like, but I, I love that the directness of this quote, you mm-hmm. know, like us as fans were like, well, is Pipkins going to be a left tackle? Like maybe we don't go first round. I'm like, man, we have no choice, but in free agency or in this draft to get a left tackle. Cause we don't have one, right? We don't have the guy, right? There's now. no one, one there, that yeah. can perform better than Trey Pipkins, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, right. So we'll see what happens. I mean, he might end up uh, molding Trey Pipkins into at least something more serviceable than he has been in his previous seasons. Um, When he was talking about the corner position, he said at corner, they come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Uh, If it was a one size fits all, then everybody would be doing that. But that's not the case. For us, it's more about the critical factors for the position. For us, it's being able to play man to man. That's where it starts. You have to be able to cover man to man. And we kind of evaluate that in two phases, how they play man to man from bump or press and how they play man to man from off. So when he says that, Kyle, what does that mean? Man to man on bump or press or man to man from off? Yeah. So man to man is what you think of when you think of backyard football. Mm -hmm. It's like, I have Kevin and I go, I I go wherever he, whatever route he runs, I'm on him. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's two different techniques to do it. Well, there's more than two, but two of the techniques is to come up and press. So you're up on the line of scrimmage. So if that receiver is on the line of scrimmage, you go up, you usually play an inside technique and you're going to try to get hands on them right away and, and, and be able to disrupt their route. Okay. Now the problem is with some of the elite receivers like Keenan Allen, if you come try to press them, you're going to be in a lot more trouble than if, if you stayed off. So you have to be able to come up and press when you need to. Also, it's all comes down to when you're doing it, say it's third and three, and they have a pass happy team. You don't you don't want to set off at five yards and give a cushion. You want to come up and press to take away the short routes gotcha. to make sure you take away that first down. So you, sometimes you have to be able to come up and press, be physical, get in their head. But then sometimes you need to be able to play off at that five to seven yard mark, and that requires a lot of quick twitch. It it's it's very very hard to sit at five yards and play man to man because you have to be able. They have the receiver has more room to manipulate you, to be Mm -hmm. able to press inside of you, to work outside of you, to be able to shimmy back inside. Like there's a lot more that a receiver can do when you're playing off. Um, But in, in, in kind of narrow it down, what he said is our guys have to be able to play man. Mm -hmm. We have to play man to man. And that's not what the chargers were about. And that's clearly why Casey Hayward is no longer on the team. Right. Um, He just didn't have that elite level man to man um, coverage. Um, attributes anymore so right it, it, it's this is also looking to the draft is very clear of what we want to do it's like he had a year coaching jalen ramsey he's like that's what we need we need a guy that can come up and press and and be like on top of you but if i want to be able to run man and not press mm-hmm. because then they know what we're running if you go up and walk up to the line of scrimmage and, and the cornerback is right there with the man it's it's clearly man to man quarterback mm-hmm. knows they'll make their checks and they'll be able to beat you but if you can play man to man from off at seven yards, just like you would cover three or whatever, cover four, whatever you might be in, then now you can disguise things a lot easier. So this is it's clear. He's we need corners that can play man, which is awesome right. for our fan base. It makes me wonder. He's very specific about corner. He, he he's talked about tackle, but he was very specific about right. the kind of player he wants at cornerback. So it makes yeah. me wonder if that kind of player is available when we get into that first round. Yeah. Corner is might that going to take a well, priority? You know what yeah. I mean? You, you have to take into account too. He's a defensive coach. This, right. Usually if you talk to coach Lynn and you ask him, what do you want in a corner versus what do you want in a receiver? He's going to give a much more detailed response of what he wants in a receiver. Mm-hmm. Our coach is going to give extreme detail on any defensive position that you ask him about. Mm -hmm. And so cornerback, he was able to give a very long in-depth, this is what my defense needs to be able to function. But as a head coach slash defensive coordinator, essentially he's going to be calling a lot of the plays and setting a lot of those up. Like when you're talking with Telesco, you're like, hey, guess what? I'm I'm a two-person. I got two votes on this, so let me give you this. This (laughs) is, you know, I want one of these cornerbacks at 13, you know, when it comes up. So it's interesting. uh, Yeah. It is 100%. I think it's I think it will manipulate what we or it'll change what we've seen in the past cuz we've had offensive coaches for so long mm-hmm. that you see us going very offense heavy usually in a draft. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it'll, it'll be exciting to see what what kind of pull he has. 
you know, hiring a young coach, you don't assume that he's going to have a huge amount of pull. Like you kind of hire him so that you can manipulate things more like as a front office. Doesn't feel like the kind um, of guy we'll that's going to happen to Brandon no. Staley. It doesn't seem like it he's do- that kind it of guy. It doesn't, but that's, that's like for me, a front office hiring a young coach, it's, Hey, we can manipulate this. We can do what we want and we're not going to get pushed back because he's a younger guy. He doesn't have the, have the like, the standing in the league, to but be they've able to done that. Back. It feels like they've done that a few times in the past, and it's like I'm hoping the well, they 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 tried to do that to Marty Schottenheimer. I'm, I'm not going to try to do that to Brandon. I'm Staley? hoping they're they're figuring out that what they were doing wasn't working, and it hasn't worked for a decade plus. Yeah. So that's my You're hope. Shamelessly, shamelessly positive. positive. Podcast. We are shameless. <laughs> yeah, get behind Spanos me. Kyle. is going to change. Yeah. That's right. He's going to be visited by three ghosts in the middle of the night <laughs> <laughs> telling him that he needs to draft a cornerback. Um, Here we are. To, to, finalize, we'll to finalize the quote, that's true. We could be. I got to be the fat ghost, obviously. Um, to finalize his uh, his quote on the corner, he said, the second thing is, uh, what is their movement like at level two or the intermediate area of the field? When they are off, what is their movement like? And we really value that because you can't just press in this league you have to play off and be able to cover receivers from that position too how do they judge the ball in the deep part of the field what is their production like when the ball is at level three how do they play the ball what are their ball skills like what's their ball judgment like how do they play in and out of the phase that's really important and then what's their open field tackling like how are they going to be in run support? Because you can't play defense in your so cor- if your corners can't yeah, yeah. tackle. They just, have to do everything. He just ripped this off like just de- there's so much detail in this like run on sentence that he had. It was just yeah. like bam bam. This is what I want. Bam 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 bam. We need this 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 and this. I'm like whoa okay, you need a cornerback. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> but the thing the thing that jumped off to me because I've seen this being an issue for the Chargers for previous years is tackling like and Big again time. i love uh, casey hayward great presence uh in the locker room i'm sure he was a captain for the team uh the these last couple seasons his tackling was as we've mentioned tsa like agent yeah it he, was yeah, uh yeah. it was a pat down <laughs> type situation so um <laughs> the fact that he's at least mentioning that like hey guys we got freaking tackle so yeah. at least acknowledging that saying that to uh the reporters was was my biggest takeaway from that um as we mentioned he did discuss tillery uh, his quote on Tillery, I'm a really big fan of Jerry Tillery's game, Staley said. I think this guy is a versatile, versatile inside player. This guy's got a got real size, speed. This guy's production last year jumped off the page for me. Jumped off the page. Huh. And I know that people want to magnify some of the sack production. There you go. That was the quote. Uh, but I think the tape, what the film said, told me a different story. I think this guy is a matchup guy inside. He's got real quickness. He's got real pass rush ability. And then he does have the ability to play on the edge. I think he was moonlighting on the edge, but he can give you physical body presence if you're playing a big heavy run team. Hey, you want to put a physical presence out there? Yeah, he has that versatility to do it. But we certainly view him as an inside player and certainly where he's going to give us the biggest advantage in the interior pass rush. But we feel like this guy's got a chance to be a complete player. This guy's a lot more tough, physical, and rugged in the run game than I was expecting. I know that when I watched him, I was really excited to work with him because he does have the versatility and traits that we really value inside. That's a glowing, glowing review from that's new yeah. head coach uh, Brandon Staley. Completely different than what fans have been saying from basically from the time we drafted him on. I think and his first season he had zero sacks, right? Yeah, as, I think if if Coach Staley went back and walked watched his rookie season, he'd be singing a different tune. Um, he had to have, he, right? Yeah. So Tillery, obvious. I mean, we know that he he put on weight last season. He mm-hmm. he he got bigger and stronger. Um, he knows what the NFL is like, and he did have a better year. I just when I watched him as the as a fan watching a football game, he didn't stand out. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't he didn't he didn't stand out. Like oh wow, look what that guy's doing in the middle of the, the pressure he's yeah. bringing and and the the, the 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 like aggressive tackles that he's making. He was just kind of a blah guy as I watched the game. Now I didn't go back and watch every game watching Jerry Tillery to see what his technique was, mm-hmm. um, which obviously that's what Staley's staff has done. So. Mm-hmm power to him and maybe he plays a, he maybe he's that unsung hero guy that we need and he's just not fun <laughs> but he <laughs> yeah. gets the job done right that's my favorite thing 
a non-fun first round pick. Those are the ones, those are the guys you want to have on your team. Those unfun, not really fun <laughs> yeah. to watch first round picks. That's that's uh yeah, yeah. that's what we're shooting for here, guys. Well, we are we are where we are, and we're gonna be shamelessly positive. Right. And that first round pick is gonna be sturdy in that Thick, not exciting beefy. or flashy, yeah. but sturdy. Sturdy. Some so a pillar, if you will. There you go. If you will. Something if to build on. So, yeah, I mean, much like Trey Pipkins, we saw flashes from Jerry Tillery last year, uh, opportunity. And so maybe that's just something that Staley is seeing in this guy. I mean, the one thing that we always have to remember is these players grow just like we all do. We all grow from year to year. We get better doing whatever it is that we do. So if these guys have a crappy first year or maybe even two years, doesn't mean that they're going to suck the third year. If anything, they could get better. The, the, <laughs> they can't go any further down than zero. So um, it, it's exciting. Staley is... He's talking a good game, man. Like I, I, there's a part, there's a, there's a pessimist in me that wants to be like, boy, don't do he it. just no, really no, likes. No, no, you we don't won't let you do it. We're not going to let you do it. We're not gonna let, no, no, I'm Adam, just saying. We're not going to let I, you do it. There's a part of me that feels don't like he it. just talks a really good game. Now, I'm not Adam, saying that that's the case. I'm not Adam, saying that that's the case. You're bringing I am it up. shamelessly positive that he is going Adam. to be the best coach in Charger <laughs> history. Say but we have not had a chance to see that yet. We all we've had Say is he'll walk the walk. He'll walk the he'll walk the line. Uh, I think <laughs> I think it's going to be great. Like I am excited to see him play. It's just when he uses words like synergy, synergy. Like it just. So you're no. saying he's too no, good to be on. true? Because feels- hang on, hang on. <laughs> no, there was before we move on from this press conference. There was one term that he used that I was like. Excuse you, me? You watch football? <laughs> <laughs> he said, this was the most Sean McVay thing I've ever heard. Any, more than even Sean McVay would say. Don't. I don't want to hear it. I want to hear he it. Said, he said Central Command Center. Oh, what the, what, he what did. What is this? Yeah. Spaceballs? Like... <laughs> Central <laughs> Command Center? That, that's not a thing. That's where they could. Yeah, I remember he was talking about like studying players and not going oh, out to senior day, senior, you know, don't senior days. Say Central Command. That's like, come on. Yeah. Central Command Center. Let's get back to the Central Command Center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beat me up to the Central Command Raise Center. Raise the shields at the Central Command <laughs> Center. <laughs> Stop making fun of Staley. I'm sorry. Now, I love I, him. To, to, but that, that was one thing that stuck out. I was like, Central, I'm. I've never heard of a central. It was center. it was an interesting term to say the least. Yeah. Um, the one good thing that will go out on this, uh, if those of you have not checked out, uh, Sports Illustrated just uh, released an article on Brandon Staley. Uh, really good read. I I woke up this morning, so it took me like an hour to read it because like I'm tired and I'm like I read a paragraph and I'm like, what did he say? And I'd have to read it again. <laughs> but it is a really good uh, article. Just that just shows how much how invested. Staley is in this team and making this team yeah. the, the best team it can be. Like he's not just here because of a paycheck. He's he is doing he's walking the walk as uh, as Kyle yeah. talked about talking earlier. the talk so, and walking the walk. We'll walk see. Like a man, yeah. Talk like, like a, a man. man. Mm-hmm. Keep it going. Mm-hmm. Keep it going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well, now it's time, folks, to go to our first segment. Hold on to your butts. It's time for Coach's Corner. Great moments are born of great opportunity. All comes down to today. You take this helmet and you put it right in his numbers, okay? I want to see nothing but snot bubbles in his nose. A lot of people want to blame coaches for a lot of things. Nobody puts <laughs> coaches up. And we shut them down because we can't. It's because I believed in you. And I wish I could say something that was classy and inspirational. But it just wouldn't be our style. Let's do it. All right, there you go. A little visual, uh, hmm, a little visual tidbit. Now that you guys are watching us on YouTube uh, for Coach's Corner, uh, that was all uh, put together by uh, Kevin Duggan. Well, to go, good job, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thank you, Kevin. All right, so we've reached into the bag of Bolt Fam questions uh, to see who Coach will uh, look at as far as their question. And congratulations, Dwayne Ray. AKA Dubsack 97. Dubsack. Uh, Dubsack. <laughs> baby, 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 Dubsack. Dubsack. <laughs> uh, all right. Coach is going to take a look at your question. So, your question uh, goes a little something like this 
After the left tackle is addressed, what defensive position group is the most important to address? According to LA Football Network, Staley ran a nickel or dime 90% of the time. With that stat, I think we need a small army of corners and safeties compared to what we have. Great point. So with the idea of running a nickel or dime, that means you're either bringing out a middle linebacker or an outside linebacker in our new 3-4 scheme. Um, so one of now your edge rusher could become that defensive tackle that bumps out um, when you bring off an outside linebacker um, or you bring out a middle linebacker and you have uh, Derwin James, which would technically still be a nickel or dime um, personnel. So nickel personnel means you have five defensive backs. Um, a dime personnel means you have six defensive backs. Um, so you just have a lot, exactly like he said, you kind of need an army of of efficient and um, good corners and safeties. Um, we all know that that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, we're letting Casey Hayward go. We now have um, one corner in Michael Davis um, and the other outside corner as an open spot. Chris Harris Jr. is our um, slot guy and with running dime and nickel a lot, there's no way he's going to come off the field very much. Um, so we need another outside corner type um, to be able to shift guys around on the inside. Now with Derwin James, um, I think Alohi Gilman is going to get a good look. Um, I think he's going to get some shots to get on the field and be that change of pace guy. Um, I really wish we still had Desmond King because I think um, with him being able to run that inside as well, um, him and Chris Harris together in our dime packages would be, um, we'd be pretty lethal with whatever rookie we pick up to play on the outside. Um, but yeah, I think that whether it be through free agency, through trade, or through the draft, you have to address outside corner and one more safety. Um, I just don't think we have the guys on the field. Like we have guys to run our base and we have backups. Um, but I don't want those backups being our dime guys, to be honest. Like if we're going to run that much dime and nickel, I don't want a backup to have to be the guy on dime. I would rather have, if you're going to have to have six defensive backs in a dime personnel, I want six starting defensive backs. Like if that's the philosophy we're going to go with, let's put money into having six great defensive backs. And right now we have four, mm -hmm. um, right, like, yeah, we have four. So we need to pick up at least two more, um, whether it be through the draft or free agency or trade. Um, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely right with, and that's awesome stat that 90% of the time, if you run a nickel and dime, you got to have more guys. Um, that aren't backups. I don't want backups on the field um, when we go into those personnel packages. I want starters on the field. So do you, do you think we're going to lean into that harder like first two days of the draft? Because if you're talking about guys that can be that versatile and are that good, you, you need to you right. need to invest in a high draft pick to get somebody like that to play in this defense that he wants to run. It all, dep it all depends on, clearly our review of our current roster is much different than what Staley's is. Mm -hmm. um, so we think very differently of Tillery than he does. Mm -hmm. How does he view um, guys like Faison? How does he view guys um, like Alohi? Are they guys that could be starters when we run that dime and nickel? Like, I, I don't know. Um, absolutely, corner's going to get addressed on day one or two. It's, it has to be first or second round along with our tackle. That like I don't I I haven't seen a mock that doesn't take us have us going tackle corner or corner tackle so yeah um those those have to be addressed those have to be starter guys that we pick up for the cheap um because those are two of the most expensive positions to pick up um in free agency so um yeah I I think that has to be your move um but yeah we'll we'll see we'll see what. But come draft day, we'll see what Staley thinks of the guys that we have right now on the roster. Right. Yeah, we still have a good chunk of change uh, to spend in free agency. And it feels like we're just kind of waiting for everybody's price to drop. Right. Um, yep. So there are still some corners. There are still some uh, left tackles out there that can potentially fill those spots. That was another thing that Staley said that stuck out to me in his in his uh, press conference. That was a great interview. All of his interviews mm -hmm. are great, but like there's so many things. One of the things that he said is free agency is about value. And it, he was mm. very blunt about it. Free agency mm. is about value, I, which is weird that we paid Corey Lindsay top. He's the top paid center in the league now. Clearly, we think but very highly of him. Yeah. yeah, that must have still been value because free agency mm -hmm. is value. That's according to him. And I'm sure that's what is echoed to him from Tom Telesco. Um, and I think we did that in a lot of other positions, but um, that's 
obviously we're we're playing the waiting game, waiting for some mm-hmm. of these these guys to come down, and hopefully that Melvin Ingram comes down or or one of those guys that's high up on that board that we want to pick up. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like these teams are like trying trying to get their guy, these young guys in the draft, and then when they don't get their young guy, they're going to go yep. out to some old dogs. Exactly, they got to pay bring a little them bit in more for money. a year or two. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Congratulations, Dwayne. Coach answered your question with a very unique and thorough answer. Uh, All right. Well, now let's get on out of Coach's Corner and go on into our next segment, Bolt Insight. All right, guys. We are here with an extremely special guest. We have former Charger and Pro Bowler, Hannick Milligan. Thank you so much for coming on, man. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, all right, cool. So it's getting really exciting for us because drafts coming quick. So um, can you tell us a little bit your experience, what it was like being drafted by the Chargers? Oh, man, i um, sitting there nervous, um, you know, being told you was going to be picked earlier in the first day or whatever. Um, and, you know, you know how you got your family around and you just kind of nervous and excited at the same time. But then as the time gets closer and closer and winds down and you see that you're not gone to, you know, you kind of get, it's like, um, you know, poking a, a pin in a, a balloon and just let the air deflate. But, uh, you know, just my family stood by me and just told me to keep my head up. And when I got that call from Marty, man, it was, it was an amazing feeling. All the, like, the negative feeling and all that disappeared. And it was just amazing feeling after that. Well, and that's an awesome segue because you were a part of a really awesome Charger team with, you know, Marty Schottenheimer as the coach and, you know, yes. played with LT and some other guys. So talk a little bit about that team and, you know, what it was like being on that Charger roster. Oh, man, if if looking back and, you know, dealing with, with Drew and, and LT and, you know, we had Gates, uh, man, Jamal Williams, we had, you know, Lorenzo Neal. Yeah. Uh, man, it was it was like we're having an all-star team, man. And, and these guys being down to earth and, you know, just coming in as a rookie, you know, want to get your hands on them, but not knowing that, not knowing at the time, you know, like LT off limits, you know, drew off limits, but cause coming in as a rookie, you're used to fighting and going against just trying to make it and do your best to, you know, get ahead, you know, and working your tail off. So, um, it, just, just amazing, man. And Philip came in, and it, it's like everything that you see from these guys is, is is facts, man. Like I'm not gonna even front. Like genuine guys, great teammates. You know, looking back and look, being older and understanding that I was, you know, playing on a team with some future Hall of Famers, never would have thought. Yeah, that's amazing, man. That was such a fun time to watch the Chargers, and it still is, but the, that was our heyday. Yeah. Me and my brother grew up right when you were on the team. That was like that yeah. was when we were like uh, the big fans. So Yeah, it was fun, man. It back it was it was, you know, having that crowd and it had the little Milligan's Island and me and Kasim, man, and we we just made, you know, made that like when Marty spoke to us, like, look, we love you guys. This is your role. This is how you're gonna help us win. And he took that serious, man. Marty took special teams serious. And I got a story about Marty I'm going to share with you guys. Yeah, well. let's let's hear it. Yeah, of course. All right. Coming from the University of Houston, I never missed a game. Started 34 out of 34 starts. Big man on campus. Um, so I come in my rookie year, and I'm I'm balling, you know, in preseason. You know, I, start, I got better and better, learned the plays, having a great time. And um. The third preseason game, uh, we played against the Houston Texans. And uh, we was I was in there. You know, I made a tackle, and I felt like a sharp pain in, in my arm, and I didn't know what was going on. Then I stayed in another play. Uh, and then I ended up going to the sideline and ended up tearing my pet, you know, my pectoral muscle. So I'm out for the season. I'm very discouraged. Um, I'm, I'm hanging in there, but as the season started, it kind of, I started feeling homesick. I started feeling useless. And one day I didn't show up. I didn't, I like, forget this. I'm, I just ain't show up. I didn't call. I didn't say anything to anybody. They're looking for me, looking for me. I, I got a knock at my door. I opened it up. It was Marty and his wife. Oh, wow. Yes. Marty and his wife. Um, told me to get dressed. So we went, sit down and have dinner. And he just talked to me. He said, young man, you're a very special player. Keep your head up. Your time is coming. And just for him and his wife to come 
to the house, man. I'm a six round pick. I'm not doing nothing for the team. You know, I'm not, I'm on IR, so I'm out for the year. Um, they offered me to travel with the team, which you know they usually don't do, um, being on IR. But for him and his wife, and he told me to keep my head up and just gave me a pep talk. He told me, look, anything you need, man, we're here for you. This is bigger than football. You know, this is bigger than football, and we love you. Just keep it in there. And I just kept going, and boom, as it progressed, became a captain, you know, with Drew, all the fellas, you know, you know, team votes and just having that confidence that he gave me, man, looking back at that, he changed my life. He, God gave me that blessing from him. You know, think, think about it. The head coach comes to the sixth round pick, hasn't proven anything. But that, ever since then, man, my, the love and respect I have for Mario is beyond. And that's like, you know, that's a, short, a story right there that, that I carry to this day that anytime I'm discouraged, man, I just think about that conversation. You know, God works in mysterious ways, man. And I mean, my mind was blown when he came there and my friends always joking with me. Marty loves some Hannick. But yeah, that's my story about Marty, man, that I had that's to share. In- that's incredible. And it's amazing how like, you know, really good leaders know when to pick people up, know when to like give that person the attention they need to like no. get them stronger and, you know, to send you off on the trajectory that you needed. Right. So definitely, that's, definitely. That's, a, that's amazing to hear. So like a little bit about like the culture, like you you were on a couple of teams. So like the culture of Marty Ball and like being on a Schottenheimer team, like it feels like it was like a family. And I kind of feel yes. like we're getting that a little bit now, like with Brandon Staley and what back. we're hearing. So what are your what are your thoughts on that? I love it. Um, I see, you know, I see like the tra- the retransformation, that old school Marty Ball coming back. And you said it best, family. And that's how we felt, man. I mean, like all our rookie class that came in and just looking at the team, you could see as the, as the season went on and they put that quarterback in there, man. Dino Mike, you know. <laughs> but that's, that's the difference. They started believing in each other. People don't realize... It starts from the top, but it also starts as with the players coming together as a unit. And as you see a lot of these teams that are successful, it's about buying in. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, coach that was there was a good coach, but sometimes you need a new voice. And, sure. you know, we never want to see that. But at the same time, you know, they fought hard, they finished strong, but we knew the writing was on the wall. And, you know, so now we it's a new chapter and, you know, we're looking forward to to the present and big things co- ahead. Awesome. Well, and I'm I very interested in your opinion on this because you were a Pro Bowler. You were not nominated to the Pro Bowl for special teams, and that was such a big part of your game. You know, we yeah. haven't had the most productive of special teams last few years and it's been kind of a bummer for a lot of charger fans because we're seeing all this amazing uh, other things going on and then we just have like a mishaps mishap so you know what do you think makes a good special teams player and like what kind of guys are you looking for to bring on a unit to make it good the guys that want it man the guys that are willing to sell out and and realizing that special teams is the most important part of the game and marty i promise you not that was the first meeting that we had every day. And he preached. He said, if you're not gonna, if I, if you're not on special team, don't think about getting on any offense or defense. And he was serious. Like he took that, he said, look, this is the most important part of the game. This is field position. And you want hungry guys. You want guys that are willing to sacrifice for the team. That's look, I had a fun doing it. And the guys that I played with, they wanted it too. And like people's other people started wanting to get a piece of the action. So the starters, they wanted it seriously. We made it like that where they everybody wanted to get part of that special team thing. And you see LT them and everybody getting caught with us. And, and that was the key, man. We made it fun. And though the rules have changed, as you see, special teams will kill you if you don't make it a priority. Yeah, that's amazing that it was kind of like, you know, our Jack boys, our secondary, it was like the yeah. special teams boys. Like everyone yeah. wanted to be a part of that. That was like the, yeah. where it was at. Yeah, that, I mean, it was, it was like, I promise, man, I, it was so exciting, man. And the competition was there and the guy, hey, man, I put this much money, hey, yeah, I'll get the ball back for us or put it on, the, you know, test, you know, things like that. So, I mean, the young generation, has to realize, man, that stars are made from that. You know, whether it'll, it'll turn you into an offensive specialist or a defensive specialist, look, it provides sparks. 
you get an opportunity where you can have the ball in your hands or you go down and show them you can tackle and make big plays. And that carries over on offense and defense. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, totally agree with that. And then my, uh, I had a question from my brother who's also a coach, and he he just wants to know from your point of view working at such a high level on, on that, yeah. is like what's more important to a good special team, like having the right X's and O's game plan or having the right guys, like mentality-wise? It starts with the guys. It starts with the guys. You can have the, the most perfect game plan that you want, but if, if I go out there half, you know what? It's not going to matter. It's about putting the guys that want to be there and, and are willing to sacrifice. And look, once I learned from Marty and he spoke to me, becoming a special team player, I was getting the same amount of praise as they was giving the LT or they was giving the Drew Brees. It doesn't matter how you do it. It was helping the team win. And that's the best feeling. Because it didn't matter if you're not, you know, they made it where you understood the importance it's anything in life you want, you got to work for it. Sure. And you always got to put that, that your heart into it, man. Nothing, nothing great comes easy. And my advice to the coaches is find them dogs that want to hunt. I love it. Yeah. That's what we need, man. And we're excited for this team. There's so many exciting things going on. It's just a fun time to be a Charger fan. So are do you do you follow the Chargers still? Is that one of the teams you follow? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I still, you know, out there, he he's one of the, you know, player personnel helpers. Um, I've go to I've went to the events, you know, when they had uh the what they call it. The alumni day. Oh, I saw a you picture know, you and you and LT. I saw a cool picture with you yeah, and LT. Yeah. Yeah, man, and Snoop was there. Like, I got him some pictures up in the wall, you know. I'm in the man cave, and, you know, <laughs> that's, that's my team. I mean, I'm a charger for life. So, I love you know, it, You know, that's that's who I, I definitely, you know, I get a lot of slack here and there, but I'm a charger all the way, man. Yeah, buddy. Well, hey, we're, we're so pumped that you were able to come on and chat with us and give us all some right, of your man. insight. I, yeah, I, I was giving you a lot of slack, man. I was playing around with it. I'm like, you know, but, yeah, I, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you whenever know, you want to come back on and talk Chargers with us, man, we would love it. Definitely, man. I, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Our pleasure. And uh, yeah, we will uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks again. Definitely. No problem, brother. God bless. Wow. Yeah, wow. Dude. Wasn't that wow. Dope? Panic Milligan. <laughs> yeah, dude. Jeez. That That's so cool. I he re- I just we were so lucky to get him, man. It was just incredible to meet him and former Charger. How did that happen? Wait, like you Kevin handles all of our interviews and all that. Yeah. Like how we did just, that happen? We kind of met on <laughs> Instagram and it just kind of worked out. We'd been trying to get him on for a couple weeks and he we finally lined it up and it just happened to be the video our first video episode. I was like, this is meant to be, bro. Bro. So oh, he's he's he was just such an awesome dude, and like his story about you know with with Schottenheimer and and oh dude that about made me cry. I know, I, man. I was, it's like, like that's what a coach that's, that's what a coach does. That's the that, leadership thing, man. Yeah, that's what that's you what a coach need. does. We don't know if that's what other coaches in the league do. It's hard for me to believe that Bill Belichick would ever do that. I think that <laughs> Hannick, yeah. I think that Hannick Milligan would have got cut if he just didn't show up. He wouldn't have got a a, a dinner with with Belichick's girlfriend. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's like, that is a coach that, that is what coaches do. Their job is not X's and O's. A head coach's job is to make sure that everyone's bought in and creates that culture that he's talking about. Like who knows if, if he becomes a special teams player that he did and becomes a pro bowler, if not for having trust and respect for his head coach enough to go out there and lay it on the line. Well, and I love that, that he was saying that, you know, special teams is the place to be like people wanted to be excited and be a part of that. Like we, that's what we need, man. That's the flip we need to get on this team and where we've been and where we need to go. That's a culture thing, man. There's no other way to say it than that is a culture that you have to create. Um, and it has to be an emphasis and it has to be real. Yeah. You can't just say, Special teams is important and then not practice it, not give them the same praise. Like he said, like to imagine sitting in a, in a, in a, in a team meeting, hearing LT getting the praise that a special teamer (laughs) is getting, but can you imagine what that does for the whole team? Sure. Anything is possible. And that's like, this is the emphasis. This is what our team's about. And this is what, this is what we believe in. There's no other way to, to put it than that. When if that if that if that happens, then there's like that's crazy. Yeah. So that was 
Absolutely. That was awesome. That was an amazing interview. Thank you, Hannick Milligan, for sitting down with my buddy Hug and Duggan and giving us some great stories, man. That was that what a way to start off our first video episode. Know, that, right? is, that is so, so special. Uh, well hope, hopefully we can get him back on and you know he can talk, love you know, it. chop it up with us a little more and maybe chat with coach. I think they could dig into it a little more and have some fun with it. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully. Excellent. Well Hannock, you're you're on speed dial. So be <laughs> yeah. ready for that. Uh, all right. Well, let's see what we have to follow that up with. It looks like it's another rendition of Fan Focus. Let's see what we got. All right, guys. We are here with another Fan Focus, and we are really excited to have Sean Mitchell from Encinitas. What is going on, Sean? Dude, how's it doing? <laughs> it's so good to have you, man. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. How was your weekend? It was good, man. It's good. Just uh, getting ready. I can't wait for this draft, man. I'm just like, I can't get my head out of Twitter and all the stuff. So it's going oh. to be exciting. Dude, so anti. There's so many ways we could go. Um, you, you, you know, no matter what happens, we're going to end up being like, hey, Tommy T's a genius. Yeah, we'll we're going we'll we'll to justify it. We'll make it happy. We'll make it a positive. <laughs> um, well, let's let's kick it off how we do everything, man. Like, how did you become a Charger fan? So, I mean, I'm born and raised in San Diego. Um, you'd think it would have started at a young age. Uh, my dad actually wasn't a big sports fan. He commuted a lot for work. But um, it was really for me when I went to college. So it was that 06 season. Nice. That was my sophomore year of college. I was out in uh, Colorado at Boulder. And being out in like Denver Bronco territory and with the team that we had, and it was like this hometown San Diego vibe and Phil and LT yeah. and, and both the Sean's on the edge and like rooting for your hometown while you're in Bronco territory. It was, I mean, I mean, dude, that was the thing. And I mean, I mean, come on, it was the 016 it was the 016. No, it's, it's, it's so crazy, man. I talk about it all the time. It's like being in enemy territory. It just, it forces you to have a stronger armor. You know what I mean? It just forces that yes. on you. So, and it makes you even more of a fan because you're Absolutely. defending yourself all the time. So that must've been, must've been crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. People hated me and I, I and I, I, uh, I definitely relished in it. <laughs> I know, right? You become that guy's like, you can just throw shit at me. I'll catch it and it'll dude, be, it's fine. Dude, 14 fine. and two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <winning>. Exactly. <laughs> um, but that 06 team, Right. The one thing everyone's going to bring up is, is, is Marlon and yeah. the, in, in, in the interception at the end of that. Yeah. And I, I know your brother is going to lose his shit when he hears <laughs> this. Um, but I was watching this documentary about Marty um, like 10 years ago. And it was more about his Alzheimer's and they kind of did like a little two minute highlight clip um, just about that. Oh, six season. It was his last season. And the they're warming up that day at the queue or or, or the Murph, yeah. you know, for OG. Yeah. <laughs> and they're warming up, and and Marty's walking up and down, talking to all the players, and he goes up to Marlon, and I swear to God, he goes right up to him. It's it's on the mic, and he goes, "Hey, when you get that game winning interception, you're you're not going to be a hero. You're just going to go down with it, right?" Shut and he goes, up. He goes, he, he laughs and goes, ha ha, for sure, for sure. Yes, sir. And I'm just, oh my fucking God. <laughs> oh my. I, I'm sorry. I, I hope had you can no idea that, out. that that existed. Dude, no. I've, been, I've been looking for that clip forever. This is either like the most fucked up, weirdest dream that I've ever had that has <laughs> yeah. no point. And it's or like, I it's swear accepted. to God, I watched that interview. <laughs> That's there. I saw it. I remember it. All right. Well, we got some we got some fans over here. Maybe we'll all go do some sleuthing and see if we can find the NFL films <laughs> yeah, archive. Dude, someone please find that. Someone yeah. please find that. Yeah. Well, what um, a great cr what a crazy year to like get into it and become like a proper fan. Like that that's that you start on top and then it's down well, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but I mean, you know, that's where the f love of Phil came from though, sure. you know. Sure. And um and you know, it was a it was a bummer to lose Marty. Um, or just kind of the philosophy of the team. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get with AJ. We're, 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 we're shamelessly positive here. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, having Phil was really a godsend because he, like, I view him as the head coach. He was the head coach. Yeah. Really? Like from, like, since we, since we got Herbie. 
Yeah. Like he, he, he was kind of the head coach and I think he masked a lot of the deficiencies from a lot of the head coaching decisions that we had. I couldn't agree with you more. And you could see it last year, just with those simple game time decisions, like game management that he would do on the field. And we just took for granted. Right. Exactly. Like if something was happening, you would have seen Phil chirping on the sidelines going, yeah. call a timeout, call a timeout. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. No, he was, he was our coach, man. He really was. And he hid McCoy's and some of these other guys that really, you know, Nor- Norv, he had some of those flaws too. So we'll see. I, I, I think Norv was, uh, was an offensive guru for yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. But did he have, did he bring the culture like Anthony Lynn brought a culture? But was he didn't he the have doer? the other. He didn't have the other exactly. side. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, hopefully yeah, our new boy, sure. our new boy Brandon Staley is going to have both, and that's what we're hoping for. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this guy. Yeah. You know, and it's nice to get some youth in the system outside of McCoy that just kind of felt like he was, I don't know, going yeah. through the motions. Whatever that was. But yeah. Staley just he he does, dude. He just adds that whole thing, and I love how he's talking about all of our players and just what he's going to pull out of this team. I think yeah. it's amazing. He's saying all the right um, things. He's getting us all excited. That's 100%. Like everyone's right? on the same page with that. So let's, let's jump over into, you know, talking a little bit about your, like, cause you're San Diego. So you have memories of the, the queue that is now no longer or Jack Mur- right. the Murph, like you were mentioning. What, like, what was your best memory from the Murph or like, what was your best kind of thing or the queue that, you know, really stood out to you? I mean, obviously it's, it's the tailgates and it's, it's your friends in the atmosphere. Right. I mean, the, the, it, it always comes down to the people. Um, but I, I, I think just by default, I have to go to the last game that I was there. It was that chargers jets game where we just kind of steamroll them. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's not like that was the most glorious or anything, but it's because it was the last. And then it, 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 it's something that's always going to just, stick in your head yeah no, I, I um it. it's not always the big splashy ones it's the ones that are buried deep in there that you'll you'll call yeah them. right yeah for what you watch on tv obviously that comeback against the chiefs uh you know yeah. when mike williams is catching that on you know yeah, that was insane. <laughs> for the two-point conversion that was insane i lost my mind <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was out of control i told the story before but i woke up an entire yeah. floor in a hotel it was absolutely yeah. insane let's uh let's jump over to you know something that's coming up quick the draft man like everyone's got a lot of different ideas a lot of different thoughts on what they what we should do in the first round what do you want to do in the first round i mean look if the if the right guy falls to us, obviously it's tackle, right? Mm-hmm. You know, if Penne is there, uh, I mean, dude, there's no way he's there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it would be so amazing <laughs> if he was. There's no way he's there. But Slater, I think there's some scenarios where he could fall. That could happen. Yeah. But let's say they're both gone. They're both gone. And, you know, we're talking about Darisaw as, as the next, but that feels a little rich for a 13. Yeah. But Vera Tucker seems like the next guy that talent wise, you're like, okay, Mm -hmm. let's take him. I don't know. I'm not on the, I'm not on the Vera Tucker train. Yeah. The the guy's a guard to me. And then I feel like you got to really address corner and you got to address tackle later. And then you're just kind of moving, you're shifting everything back. If you take Tucker, I mean, look, if you take, if you take Vera Tucker, could you essentially get like Walker little on the third? which could be the steal of the draft. Yeah. Cause if that guy plays last year, it's so Walker little out of Stanford. Yeah. This guy was five-star recruit. He literally has no bad tape. He just doesn't have a lot of it. If he played last year, I mean, maybe we're talking about him in the top 10 or maybe we're talking about him at the 13th. Not so maybe bad. that works out. You know, there's, there's a lot of guys and like we've talked about, there's so much film that wasn't made on a lot of these people that are going into the draft this year, or it was very limited. So like these draft, our draft department needs to hit this shit out of the park this year. They really need yeah. to go figure it out. Cause that's what we need. Well, I mean, or there's going to be a lot of a risks taken, you know, I, 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 I read an article the other day about, you know, they looked at the last 15 years of all the drafts, first round draft picks in general are busts. Yeah. 51% of the time. That's crazy. So, I mean, it's kind of like, we got to take a step back. Like, you know, it's still a little bit of a crapshoot, 
even if we get Slater, who knows? Like maybe the guy doesn't pan out. You never know. I don't, you know, it's possible. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming on, man. It was great chatting with you. And uh, hopefully we can meet up at one of those tailgates at the new stadium and uh, throw back a couple brewskis. Dude, I'd be so stoked. Uh, thanks for having me. This yeah, is awesome. Appreciate I- it. You guys do awesome work. Also, I love the new logo. Thanks, man. We appreciate that, man. Yeah. Trying to, yeah. We're trying to All improve. Right. Always trying to improve. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, no. Anyways, don't make it weird. Kill love you, bye. Kill love you, bye, dude. Don't make it weird. I like that. <laughs> Don't make it weird. <laughs> Don't make it weird, dude. Don't make it weird. <laughs> Don't you do it. Love Whatever that. you do. Just hey, you just I shut up. That. Let me tell you I love you and don't make it weird. <laughs> don't. Don't, don't, dude. don't look me in the eye when you say it. <laughs> yeah, look away. <laughs> say I love you. Okay, love you bye. And bye. Oh, no, dude. It's so, <laughs> it's, it's so great having him on, man. He's, you know, it's fun to talk to some San Diego fans, too. We don't have a ton yeah, of those sure. on here. So. Dude, yeah. what about that bombshell about him talking to Marlon okay. McCree? People so, got to find that. I know. So here's the deal if that conversation happened, if I wasn't a coach, I would be furious. As a coach, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at a player in the face and said, don't do this, and they do it. <laughs> like, almost instantly, they do it. So it's like, the if, first if thing anything, they do. yeah, 100%. If anything, Marty, if he had that doubt in his mind, he shouldn't have played Marlon McCree. <laughs> like, that, that's what I've come to know. It's like, if, if the reason that you're bringing that up with him is because you doubt it. You know that Ron McCree's a showboater. <laughs> wow. He's going to try to score. McCree's he should have pulled his ass out of the game and just McCree's won not the a Super start- Bowl. We're he's still not San a Diego starter. Chargers. Yeah. <laughs> he's not a starter. And he's like, Coach, why, why aren't I in, uh, in the game? He's like, dude, I had a premonition. It's not yeah, going to work. Fourth Bad quarter. Feeling, you're going to blow it for us. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Bad feeling, buddy. <laughs> wow. Imagine explaining that to the press. Uh, I had a bad feeling about him. <laughs> Wasn't feeling right, you know? Yep. Wow. So thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you, was, Sean. Yeah, yeah dude. Awesome. You're uh thanks for reaching out and coming on. It's I, <laughs> dude, I, like I say it every week. I love meeting because we we ended the interview and talked for like another 20 minutes. Just like <laughs> it's just it's so much fun. So thanks, brother. We appreciate your time. That's so awesome. Thank you, Sean, for coming on and chatting with my buddy Kev. Uh boy, th- these have just been some great interviews for our first video episode i i can't i can't expect where it's going to go from here but i know probably our down. next segment probably down a little okay bit. come on now next yeah. segment is the <laughs> craig experience positive. don't set the guy up for failure oh, man craig's come on. coming oh sorry i didn't mean yeah, that craig. Craig's, sorry. craig i'm sorry craig's coming in hot so craig, let's see <laughs> craig it's calm gonna, down it's gonna be good don't make it weird come on in man kick your feet up the oh craig experience. hello there make yourself at home you got some stuff to talk about right moving on now, thanks to you guys' support, you get to look at these glorious mugs every week. CC gang, big salute to the rest of the Bolt fam. What's going on? It's your guy Craig in Texas, and welcome to another edition of The Craig Experience. I want to first take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody out there that's supporting the channel. These guys do an amazing job, and I want to say thank you to them, as always, for allowing me the opportunity to contribute every week. Um, It's been an amazing experience and just looking to continue to grow this thing bit by bit. Um, We're going to kill and crush this narrative that the Chargers don't have fans. We got to do it one pod at a time. And it's been really awesome to see the community grow and all of the new content coming out. So let's keep it pushing. Right. So this week, we're going to talk a little bit about another position that is kind of not necessarily a sneaky one of need, but one that we can definitely address in the draft. May not take a really, really high pick to do it, but I also think that Staley's shown some foresight in not going after guys in free agency in order to accomplish that goal. And uh, we're going to talk about edge rushers. And there are plenty of guys that can kind of fit the bill, even though we know that this year, Chenna should get his opportunity to prove that he can be the guy. And I think he will. And I'm predicting a huge breakout season for him. But that said, there should absolutely be an emphasis on taking someone to develop behind him, maybe be a rotational piece. And what I think we've kind of identified is that Staley has a type. He likes his edge rushes to be longer, pause, and he likes them to be versatile. So I know everybody was kind of a little up in arms about them not getting a hold of Leonard Floyd. They thought maybe that was a shoe in for him to come over to the from the Rams to the Chargers. But, I mean, once we saw that price tag, what was associated with that and what the Rams paid him, 
definitely off the table. But I do think Staley saw some guys in this year's draft that can fit the bill perfectly. And the guy that I have my eye on is Ellerson Smith out of UNI, Northern Iowa guy. And no, not a huge school, but they've got a couple guys coming out even in just this year's draft that's some real players. And I mean, we're talking about a six foot seven cat. He is 260 pounds, ran with a high 4'6", low 4'7", 40, um, a 41 and a half inch vertical. So the kid's a stud athlete. And we do know that, of course, pro days aren't the end all be all, right? I mean, they can, though, help improve your draft stock or lower it. And he didn't do anything negatively to affect that. So, I mean, you throw on the tape of I mean, what I could find of it and the kids making splash plays all the time. And he just kind of seems like the type that can be come in and groomed. And I mean, if we're just taking that one year with the Rams, it's proof. Staley has shown that he can make it happen and sometimes with replacement pieces. So who's to say that he can't do the same thing with a guy that he sees talent in and is willing to bring in and cultivate. And it seems like we have the staff ready, ready, willing and capable to do it as well. So that's the guy that I have my eye on. Uh, fellas, what we got? We're live and direct now. Glad to be able to see you while we're doing this. And uh, give me your opinion. What do you think? Who's someone, well, above just the obvious names, that you think can be had this year in the draft that maybe some people aren't really paying that much of attention to that can be guys that can come in and contribute and maybe in a year or two be complete studs? But anyway, you know what it is. Old ganger don't bang per usual. Okay. Love you. Bye. Craig, baby, good to see you, oh, man. Seriously. <laughs> that good experience Lord. just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> I was wondering what these tickets to the gun show were for. Now I know. Good gravy. Man. <sighs> Yeah, it's not fair. Yeah, dude. I'm so glad he's on our team. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, but yeah, now dude. now if anybody that's been a listener to the podcast before, if you go back, if you've listened to previous episodes and you can recall the story of uh, Craig seeing somebody in a grocery store that was wearing Charger gear and yelling out "Bulking!" Like <laughs> I would have yeah, like oh, I would have dropped everything. My pants would have fallen down for no good reason, <laughs> and I would have just cried. Like <laughs> oh, man. man. <laughs> All right. Well, great question, Craig. Uh, yeah, obviously, great. yeah, great point. We, we all have our fingers on the pulse of edge rushers here at the Charger Chat. That's all we can talk about. You can't stop us from talking about edge rushers. So <laughs> uh, I, I, we, we had our boys take a look, and uh, you might hear an echo as far as to what who you thought it was. Yeah, but I, need, I, can, I, I need to I, justify myself. I can promise I, you, we didn't realize this. We just watched yeah, this. <laughs> we Everyone knows that me and Craig have a little bit of an underlying com- competition for – Who's the third man on this podcast? Because <laughs> he, he has filled in for me a couple of times. Um, and so I would never blatantly agree with Craig, I don't think. I don't think I've had that yet. Wow. And here's, here's, uh, but it's just like it hasn't happened. We're both, we're both shamelessly positive Absolutely. Charger fans. Um, and we both support the same team. It's just, it's just so happens that we both have, we have different takes on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, Kevin never lets me and Adam listen to the interviews or the Craig experience because he wants to get our like real our genuine reaction, reaction to them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we never get to hear him beforehand, but he'll tell us like, hey, Craig asked this, so make sure you have something ready. And so he, he said, <laughs> Craig wants to know like late round rusher. I shit you not. <laughs> I had Ellerson Smith out of Northern Iowa. Uh... I am not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to even to solidify my point, this goes back to the senior bowl. It's one of the guys from the senior bowl that I said, Hey, I don't, I don't even know anything about this guy, but Ellerson Smith at Northern Iowa, it was making plays. Yeah. Cause he is, he's a, he's six foot seven, 245. And his, his frame is not even like done filling out yet. I think he's going to be a <laughs> six, seven, like 265 pound guy by the time he's done his second wow. year in the NFL. Um, I, I would love to Get see that. He, he's like a fourth round guy. He's not, uh, a use our draft stock when the, one of these guys we need as a day one starter, he's the guy that you can draft. And I think he could make some big plays for us. Um, yeah. In 2019, he had 14 sacks, 26 <laughs> tackles for a loss and 63 total tackles for an edge guy. That's a lot of production. 
yeah. um, in the tackles department. He's he's around the ball a lot. Um, in 2020, like Craig had mentioned, Northern Iowa didn't play, so he didn't have any tape, but he did go to the Senior Bowl. Clearly, he's been working. He's been doing something, even though he's not playing um, actual football games. He, he was ready to ball out against some of the best players in the country. So, um, yeah, Ellerson Smith is... He's my guy too, Craig. We're all we're in this together. <laughs> yeah, feels good. This feels good for a change of pace. All right. Well, Huggin, did you have a different name written down? Yeah, I did a little research. It's a similar thing, just like a massive guy that's very quick, very um, got a lot of power. It's Peyton Turner out of Houston. He's 6'6", 270, 35 inch arms. Like he's he's a beast. He's just a physical monster. But he, you know, he's like some of these guys who don't play up to the competition, so you can't really get a good read on him. But he he was he was dangerous when he played, but he just wasn't always facing the most, you know, stout competition. So mm-hmm. this is something oh, somebody careful. somebody to keep an eye on. Eye on our you know? boy Milligan from Houston will be not happy with. I take it back. I take it back. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> but who knows what it was back in 2003 versus now? It's just the different different teams. Touché. Different. Yeah. Touche. All right. You're trying to get me in trouble with Milligan. God damn it, Kyle. <laughs> This, you, have, yeah. you already have a leg up, but we need to. Me and Adam need to find our way. I try, in. I try and trick you as often as down possible. Pull ourselves up. <laughs> yeah, I try yeah. and trick you as often as possible, Kyle, and you fell for it once again. <laughs> once <laughs> again. Ah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, there's some names to look at, folks. Edge is certainly a position that we might be keeping an eye on for as many times as Staley said it in his interview. We might. We might need some more edge. So can you? Can you guys also? You never said like, yeah, Kyle said that in the pre-production. I agreed. I set you, you up for that. You that did, like, yeah, like, I I did legitimately Kyle, say that. You before seem I really knew. upset. You seem really upset. You're being very defensive. Right? <laughs> very upset, Kyle. I don't know. I don't know why. Now you can I see his know, face. Sorry. This is what really upset looks like. <laughs> I'm like a this deer is, in the headlights. He's right on. Now. He's at the beginning of the shame spiral. Like, Look in his uh, eyes. There it is. It's That's all good. the beginning of the shame spiral. I can, How do I get out of this? I can attest. <laughs> He's getting dizzy, guys. He's oh dear. Dizzy. Let's let's get out of this. Let's get out of this. I can attest. Out. Kyle did say Ellison Smith uh, prior to the recording of anything. So um, names to look out for, folks. Uh, thank you, Craig, for uh, melting down one of my co-hosts. I appreciate it. <laughs> so smart, it. Craig. Um, you're so smart. With you're that so Smith smart. Pick. Um, all right, so it's that time, folks. We're 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 an hour and a half into this podcast, and it's time to roll into Ask Bolt Fam. And God, all of you guys came out of the woodwork to freaking throw out questions and requests. This is support. my this, this is my favorite part of our podcast. And well, now you get to see Bolt it. Fam. Now, now you all get, to, get to. And now you, you get to see Adam's face morph. You get to see the the man behind the curtain. Uh, all right. Well, the let's Wizard start. Let's start this off super creative. Uh, Puros Bolts had a question and a request for a voice. This, guy, this might be tough. I'll do my best. Here we go. This question is for all you guys. What's the best advice you can give a new dad? Our baby boy was just born yesterday, and I literally changed my first diaper last night and became a pro at it by today. Just trying to pick the brain of fellow dads. Regular voice. I don't know. Do you think I pulled it off? I was... I wasn't no, very confident with it. the regular voice. Dude, congratulations. Voice. That's you feel exactly it? What you sound like. Congratulations, uh, my friend. P- yeah. Big pops, dude. Congrats, buddy. This is how the Charger fan base is going to grow. Um, very, We very... need to breed them into existence. Yeah, you need to breed, breed Charger yes. fans. That's organic. how we get more. Yeah, It's organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. an organic <laughs> way to go about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, congratulations. It's... Uh, and awesome, you already got the diapers down. It took me, my first one, it took me forever to, like, properly not waste well, those, about those, 15 wipes, so good those work. Those first couple diapers are Woo. real. Like, that's one thing I'll say is the diaper changes get better. <laughs> those first couple <laughs> those first couple tar diaper changes are no joke. That Those are, like, that's for vets. Yeah. Those are not rookie, <laughs> rookie deals. Dude, yeah, you're jumping so. into the deep end, and then you can kind of yeah, get yeah, your yeah. way to the shallow, and you'll be all right. Yeah. Trial by those fire. Tar, those those tar poop <laughs> diapers don't don't lie. Um, yeah, a couple of words of advice. Hold on and and enjoy the ride. Yeah. It's it's crazy, and it 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 gets crazier as you go. But enjoy it. Yeah, it's all, being a being a dad is awesome. Being able to enjoy um, the Chargers with your kid. Um, is is why we love sports. It's, totally, it brings people together, and um, that I can't wait to see um what you guys are able to do. It's awesome. 
Yeah, I would say the big one for me is just keep mom happy and comfortable because it's right after they have babies, man. They need as oh, much support as possible. Especially so right now, yeah. You change all those diapers and give her a break, dude. And like, uh, yeah. Clean the house, make the meals. Take care of them. They're take care of mama. Of yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, as the single guy of this uh, three yeah, what, what podcast, thoughts? <laughs> uh, my thoughts are, uh, you know, it's great not having to change diapers or make anybody happy, really. I just have to make myself happy. That's and I I think it's a great life that I've chosen to live. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Kevin, don't laugh so hard. I heard it. No, just the way he said it. It's just too funny. I'm not making fun. I just it's too funny. No, it's good. Uh thank you, Puros Bolts, for yeah, asking the question. Buddy. It's, Congrats, uh, man. Very important. Uh, next, we move on to Lavish Syndrome, who asks the question, What draft pick that you feel is realistic would make you really mad? I don't want any Alabama wide receivers. That would just mm. piss me off. I don't want any of any of it. Even though we did the hype game last week, I don't want any Alabama wide receivers at 13. No, I yeah, don't want it. I don't. I don't. It's hard. It's that's that's hard. Like, am I gonna say I'd be mad? No, because I think I think it's a good reminder for all Charger fans, all football fans going into a draft. We don't know what it's gonna turn out. We don't. Right. We Kevin was not all that happy with the Justin Herbert. Well, you quit pick bringing me up all the time. We talk. He's about just stuff, using dude. it as an example. I I it's an example. We went shamelessly positive and got excited, and now Kevin is the biggest Justin Herbert fan I've ever met. So, all time, seriously. Um, <laughs> working on a tattoo. Working Get on his a tattoo. Work. Just Look his out. face. Like we, a, like a photo real tattoo, like somewhere real nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Herbo. But it's just a good reminder to not get too excited, upset with any pick because we don't know what it's really going to turn out into for a couple of years. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, my the only thing I would even be remotely upset about running back does not seem like a need at all for this the team, 13, and, yeah. especially at 13, honestly, anywhere, maybe low and uh, maybe a long snapper. I don't here's, know. <laughs> here's, here, here's the one pick I would be pissed off about is Zach Wilson quarterback from BYU in the first yeah. round. If we yeah, just, that would, I, like, there you go. If Good, we answer. The Good answer. I'd be pissed. Yeah. yeah like, that was a waste. There you go. Other than that, I don't know how it's going to turn out. We have needs everywhere. Every year, it's something different. So if we can, I don't know. Like, I, I want, I have guys that I want, but if it doesn't happen that way, we're going to, we'll wait and see. Everything you, know, you guys just said was fired. fine, but I still feel exactly the same about these Alabama You don't want receivers. an Alabama. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> All cool right. Story. Thank you. Thank you, Lavish Syndrome. Now we move on to Bobby Caldron, Bobby. who asked the question. Who do you think has a great shot at breaking out this season? Because of Staley's history, I think Nas is a pretty easy choice. However, I think Justin Jackson uh, goes off this year, really pulling it for him as a Chicago guy. I, I mean, he, that was one of the things that he did talk about in the interview was he's like, Nas is the type of safety that I right. want, like that. I think fits really well for this team. So obviously, yeah, he's, he's pretty high on, on Nasir Adderley. I hope um, he's successful. It'd be good to have one of our top three picks be reliable from that draft. Like that right? would be awesome. Um, I'll jump on the back end. Like I, I'm not a huge, I'm more Josh Kelly than I am. Justin Jackson. Like we saw more flashes. I think he got in the doghouse. Like, I think there's more potential for Joshua Kelly, honestly. I yeah, hope so. Yeah, and Justin Jackson has been an injury issue he every just, year. Every year, so it's always it, hurt. Now, if he can stay healthy and produce, he can produce if he stays healthy. Um, but I think it's a mad, matter of chemistry and staying healthy that he just has not been able to do. I mean, that Pittsburgh Steeler game that he had is burned in my mind, maybe for the rest of my uh, fandom. He had a couple of runs that were just incredible awesome. in that upset upset W. Mm -hmm. And um, but I, yeah. I think that right now, as far as the pecking order, he's he's third. He's third on the depth chart. So he's gonna have. He, could he break out? Absolutely, but he has to stay healthy. Um, and I don't I don't know if that's gonna happen. I've I've said, and I'll, I think this is kind of the popular take now. Zuchin and Wosu is gonna have the big breakout year. Yeah, um, that's kind of the popular say, opinion. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think that's the guy that 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 sh is is posed to have a great year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, Bobby. Always good to hear from you. 
Uh, next, we move on to J.F. Stein B315, who asks the question. Take me through an afternoon of watching the Chargers with the Duggan this Bros. Is good. Papa Duggan included. <laughs> Who's the Debbie Downer, Mr. Reality Check? <laughs> Which bro starts shouting at the refs first? Who's most likely to get slammed to get in trouble with security? <laughs> Much love from the Bay Area. K love you. Bye. Oh, that's so good. This is one of my favorite questions. Okay, so okay, I'll so answer first. I'll answer first, and then Kevin can rebuttal if he has differences. There okay. you go. Why don't okay. we do the first, the Debbie Downer at the same time? Let's Debbie Downer the on the count of three. One, two, three. Dad. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dad. Yeah, love and you my too. dad is the most faithful <laughs> fan to this podcast. He he's just the most he's he he knows a lot because he's such a great coach and he's very realistic with his <laughs> and he's he's very opinionated. So um yeah. I, he he's that's that's why my dad he gets he gets on the char- he, he's also been the Charger fan the longest so right. he has more hurt yeah. down deep in there. <laughs> his scars um, run deep. I just see that Johnny Cash song hurt every time. Yeah, yeah. Hurt myself I, today. I think, <laughs> I think Mr. Reality Check. I I I, I think th- I think sometimes I try to play that role as like a. Guys, I would it's say okay. you are Kyle. It's the yeah. first quarter. Like I, that was a bad call. There's nothing we can do about the ref. Like that kind of a thing. Um, which bro starts shouting at the rest first? I'm gonna go Kyle. I think that's I think that's Kevin. I think Adam, that's you. What do you think? We've watched games together. I know. I'm trying to f- think who who shouts first. You both get very shouty. That that we is for very animated. For sure. that's, that's true, <laughs> I'm just yeah, sitting yeah. there like holding a baby, going like, "Hey, um, <laughs> Adam's watching. Yeah. Adam's watching, like not saying anything because he doesn't want to piss him off." <laughs> um, God, I'm gonna. It's honestly a toss up, but I'll I'll say okay. I'll say Kyle gets gets okay. shouty okay. first. I think yeah, Kyle yeah, I think. will notice the uh, imperfections of whatever's happening, whether it's a bad right. call or a bad player. Good Somebody's take. out of position. I think you're going to notice it before Kevin does. So Thanks, I'll say that, you shout first. Wow, first, that was that he out found great a way to me. turn that around yeah. and make me sound like I don't know what I'm watching. <laughs> you went from being a whiner to you not knowing. Uh, the fuck, how did you do that, you dick? <laughs> oh, that was a, okay, number three. Who is the most likely to get slammed to get in trouble with security? Absolutely, Kevin. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You get to wear that Medal of Honor, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. get that badge. Kevin is the first to go to war if anyone tries to talk smack about right. anything. Kevin is the I'm first. I'm much more of a pacifist. I'm not going to try to do anything. I'll I'm always shamelessly positive to yeah. de- at defending my people that I love. So right. come at me yeah. and we'll... Right. I, I don't want to fight. But I will. But I will. Yeah, but I'll try. <laughs> yeah. When you woke up that whole floor uh, at the hotel, was uh, security uh, <laughs> readily available to come knock on your door? Uh, no, because I shut the lights off and <laughs> pretended like I wasn't the one Nobody that did it. Do not disturb. Yeah, I just fuck shit. That wasn't me. My bad. Yeah, yeah. Even when I'm by myself, I'm getting in, getting in trouble with the <laughs> with the with authorities. It. So there's uh, with the law. With the law. <laughs> All right. Great well, question. Great that, question. That was uh, so money, dude. That yeah. was great, JF Stein. Thank you. Uh, we move on now to Tricky 101, who asked the question. Looks like the Chargers are going to keep Mike Williams this year. What does he need to do to earn a second contract with the team? I think the better question is, what team? Because if he has a good year, somebody's going to want to pay him a lot of money. Right. So that's right. the tricky thing. You you know you want him to have a good year, but if he does extremely well, you're, he's probably pricing himself out of this team because we paid a whole more bunch of money than what to we're Keenan paying Allen. him now. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's a it's a weird thing, and everyone talking about we need to find somebody to be ready in case you know in the wings is there they have good points. Mm-hmm. Well, what what's the biggest knock on Mike Williams is that he doesn't stay healthy through a year? Yeah. No one's questioning his athletic ability. No one's cl- questioning how he can go up and get the the 50-50, 80-20 ball. He'll go get it. He has his skill set, and he's really good at what he does. The, the knock on him is if he stays healthy. So if he can stay healthy this and play 16 ga- or 17 games now, mm-hmm. um, nice. he's going to get paid because he, he'll put up production. He's not going to be a 12 catches a game guy, but he'll get his four or five balls and make big plays. That's what he does. Mm-hmm. Totally. 100%. All right. Thank you, Tricky101. We move on now to Anchovies21, who asked the question. 
with us playing the Patriots and us having DJ that is known for shutting down top-tier titans, does he cover Smith or Henry? Also, am I the only person who writes down multiple questions and picks the best one? Am I? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. Oh, that Kyle. was a good face morph. That, that was, was, a, that was morph, a solid man. face morph. Yeah. What do you think, Kyle? Uh, you, you, I'd probably put him on Hunter. I think that he'll want to play against Hunter. Yeah, that would be fun for him. I would want to um, see them shut we know, him down too. We know Derwin likes to tackle people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think with, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you're ever gonna see a something predictable. I think that's the hope is that with our defense, you're not gonna see Derwin line up on Hunter Henry the whole game. Because then that becomes, pre- but then it becomes predictable, and then you 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 go away from it if that's getting shut down. I think he's gonna be all over the place. I think he'll be on Johnu sometimes. He'll be on Hunter sometimes. He'll be at at free safety sometimes. He'll be rushing off the edge sometimes. So I don't think you have one specific thing. Because then if Belichick knows, oh, you're gonna take away Hunter Henry. Okay, cool. Like fine. Then I'll go find someone else to get the ball to. Um, so he's not gonna be just uh, a one shutdown guy i think mm-hmm. he's gonna be all over the place all right well thank you anchovies always good to hear from you next we move all right next we move on to ynwa dad <laughs> now here's the thing ynwa dad i love you okay <laughs> ynwa dad i laughed question. i laughed so yeah. hard this, at this was yeah, this, so hard that he sent it to our group chat early so I, we can all I, usually I he could holds not, them for us i could not believe what you wrote now <laughs> I don't want this to be a five-hour podcast. So, YNW Dad, YNW Dad, I love you. I'm not going to read this uh, book that you've written uh, for this character voice that you want me to do. Maybe, but but I think we need to like throw it up on our story on Instagram. I'll put it up somewhere. So, so the whole idea is that yeah. last episode we were talking about how, you, Adam, you love when somebody gets you in the right frame of mind for a character. It's great. We're looking at probably <laughs> 35 to 40. 40 sentences of backstory for how he wants this question asked. Just the voice. Okay. Yeah. Now, and it's, <laughs> wait till you hear the start. question. Wait so, till you hear the question. Okay. Wait, it starts with Danish upholsterer who refurbishes <laughs> antique okay. lamps and is feeling troubled lately. That's where it starts. And it goes on. <laughs> it goes on. It is for, it's like so creative. Words. I yeah. love this YNWDA dad. Thank you. So much, but oh. uh, we'll, we will post this. Anybody that's curious, go to Reddit. He posted it in Reddit. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I'll so retweet funny. it after we after we air this episode. But uh, let's get to your question. It's very important. I understand. Uh, <laughs> it goes something like this: Data saw, oh horn. Oh, I that. hope you could feel the emotion <laughs> <laughs> in that question. God oh, bless you, YNWA God, Dad. That, that was amazing. Uh, you never walk, walk alone. alone. You, you never, never walk, walk alone. alone. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Uh, well, great okay. question. Let's Derisaw great or question. Horn? So here, I, this one for me, honestly, the more I'm looking at it, has become a coin flip. Where if we land in this position and it's Darisa or Horn, I could flip a coin and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna Would you like, be happy either way? Whatever I'd be, Tommy I'd be, T does. I'd be okay. I'd be okay with either one of these guys. I would right. be too, yeah. That, if I was Tommy T and you put me on the clock and I have to pick one, I'm picking Darisa. And I I believe me, I'm in the same position. When I I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. Right. And I get to sit back and judge the production of whoever he picks. But if I have to choose, I'm betting that Asante Samuel Jr. is available in the second round, and I can have two starters right off the bat. Um, because I don't think the left tackle you're going to get in the second round is to the quality as the Asante Samuel Jr. that you get in the second round at that position. That's a great point. Now, could that all go to crap and him not be there? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd be pissed that I passed on Horn. Um, yeah, you'd be but, screwed on that one. But like, that's, in all honesty, like either one of these guys they pick, I'd be hyped on. But to, if I had to make a tr- choice, I was the GM, I'd pick Darisol. Excellent. Yeah, I, I from your talk earlier about when you were in Coach's Corner and talking about how we would need like an army of, of cornerbacks yep. for these dimes and nickels, 
Um, I, I, you're kind of convincing me to go cornerback in the first just because of multiple holes as opposed to one big hole, you know, on, on the line. So, boy, yeah. and I, I wouldn't hate it said, either way. Yeah. After everything Coach just said about cornerbacks and how detailed he went in talking about the quarterbacks and the guys he's looking for and the specifics. It sounds like that's what he really wants. It sounds like Horn might be a guy over Derisaw is what it, it sounds it, like to it me. It feels like he's going to go after what he thinks is most needed. And right. that could end up being the cornerback position, and it could be Horn. It could be somebody else. Well, I, I argue that the most needed is tackle. The best available would be Horn. That's that. That's too conflicting for me, Kyle. My emotions are. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think straight. <laughs> He's too lost in this Danish upholster. I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm lost in this character. There's. <laughs> you went full joker on us. <laughs> oh shit! I gotta wipe the tear from my eye. That was. <laughs> <laughs> you never walk alone. You never walk Dad. alone, Dad. Yeah, Ten. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dad. For, for a great question. <laughs> that is a great question, though. In the in the comments down below and on YouTube, I would love to see like people's opinions on Darius Arhorn. Like the interaction that we've had yeah, on YouTube has man. been awesome. The comments are so cool. So, like, keep those comments coming, but then at the bottom of whatever you want to say, toss in a Darisar horn. So, we, I, I would like to see where everyone's at. And yeah. I just want to let everyone know, I'm now opening up the Ask Bolt Fam to YouTube because we got everyone else except for you guys. So, right. post in last the most recent episode, but start with Ask Bolt Fam and then ask your question, and we'll get it on the following show. There so, we want to get you guys involved, too. So, 100%. let's keep rolling. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, YNWA Dad. Uh, let's move on now to Hurt JD. Don't hurt JD. Don't do it. Uh, don't. He's. What did he do to you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he asks a question. Like Zoink Scoob, what needs to go our way in order for us to make a Super Bowl run within the next few seasons? What scenario do you imagine happening in order for this to happen? <sighs> I love this hypothetical. It makes me really excited. Uh, I think Herbert. If Justin, if you get him <laughs> cooking, if you build around him correctly, and we have a strong defense, that those are we have the the secret to the formula is Justin Herbert, and it's all <laughs> That's about the, the secret sauce. It's all about the mixture. It's all about the little bit of uh, little oregano, the little um, little um, um, <laughs> some other spices. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Um, mm. Just it's really a little really oregano. About, it's a little really paprika. About, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A little um, zesty it's, it's, Italian it's, blend. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that's essentially it for me. And I think y y y once that starts happening, like when we were talking to um, Hannick, it's like people around that team will start believing in each other and fighting together more. And I think that that is the recipe for success for us right now and building around him. That's what we need to do. I don't know. I'm a charger fan. I don't know what it takes to win a super bowl apparently, um, <laughs> but it um, in reality, like it doesn't have anything to me, like personnel is important, but that's not, that's not what is absolutely necessary to win a super bowl. Every team has good personnel. Um, our Chargers in 2006 were the best team in the NFL and still did not win a Super Bowl. A lot of things have to go your way. You have to get lucky. Get lucky. I think it, Justin Herbert has to stay healthy. Absolutely. Um, you have to get lucky and you have to have a culture that buys in. Um, and that's what we're all praying that Staley brings is that culture that has that buy-in that, that creates guys like we talked to today that want to be a part of special teams so they can contribute to winning football games. Um, and that's the culture that has to start at the, with the chargers. That's why you see, you see franchises that are perennial um, Super Bowl contenders because they have the culture stays consistent. Um, players come and go and they still find a way to, to, to contend. So our culture has to be there. Uh, and, and man, I really hope that Staley's bringing that um, with him. Fingers are absolutely crossed. So, all right. Thank you, Hurt JD. Now we move on to Herb, aka Zool420, who asked the question. Nice. <laughs> Do you guys think we're going to go cornerback or offensive tackle in the first? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, uh, hang shit. on. Kevin's face just morphed too, watching Adam. 
We'll go for the multicam <laughs> shot for that one. All right. Oh, my God. This is one of those yeah. coin toss. Whoa. Yeah, we were know. just talking about it. You sounded like those like, sound effects? It sounded more like that a missile good. crashing yeah. than a coin. It was, of course, it, it was like brothers. there was a lot of Fucking force. It, it was just powerful. powerful. It was very action-packed. I am what I am. Powerful. Um, yeah, it, it's... I don't think we'll be mad either way. Whichever the decision is, obviously they'll pick who they think is best for the for the team. Wow, the tune of our podcast after a couple weeks tackle of, like, tackle draft it's lead still up. tackle. It used still to be tackle tackle tackle. It tackle. is still tackle. If it's not a tackle, it is still tackle. I don't know though. I, I feel like we're shifting. No, we're not. I, I, it's still a tackle. Tackle tackle. If the right tackle is there. That's that's always been the the stipulation. Like I still the right want to move up to, to get there. the right tackle. That's don't get me wrong. I'm all for that too. That was something that there there was a tweet about Atlanta. You know, opening up possibilities for a trade up right. to the fourth. Nobody's really come forth as to say who which teams have been interested in doing that, if any, really. Yeah. They um, want a buttload. I'm sure picks. they do, but yeah. that that trade hasn't happened yet, and we've still got time before yeah. the draft. But it to piqued happen. our interest. It as certainly to- did. Man, should we move up and get that tackle we really want? Because we are still all over. We want tackle, but Mm -hmm. we don't want to reach. Yeah. So we'll see what the pick is. Tackle, I think, is obviously the first choice. But would it, if cornerback ends up being it, would we be heartbroken about it? I wouldn't be. I know I said earlier on, like, I would break something if we don't draft a tackle. <laughs> yeah. I have, we're a week to week podcast. We're a week to week podcast. We're you shamelessly never know. positive, and that, that sways. Well, that more information can, comes to it'll, light. It'll shift us. You know, yeah. we, stuff moves in free agency. We didn't have this was back when we didn't have the line that we currently have now, at least the right. holes or the I'm still people holding, that we've solidified. I'm, I'm still holding strong. I'm not Absolutely. wavering on this tackle shit at all. This is what we need. Fingers are crossed. Um, okay, Herb Zool420. Thank you for asking the question. We move on now to Jay Walt16, who asked the question. Fun question here to break up the draft talk with Herbert being the single star QB in Hollywood. <laughs> surely he has the eye of some Hollywood starlets. Name an actress that you guys could see him dating. How would you react if he were to date a Kardashian slash? Jenner. No, I don't want it that at all. What? <laughs> it'll ruin <laughs> if he does, it'll ruin his football career. Yeah. We'll, he'll be a bust instantly. Oh man. Dude, I'd be, you know, honestly, like it might be best if he just stayed single for a really long time and just focused yeah, on football. I think he should just date saying. his Traeger grill, is my <laughs> yeah. I would rather see him put a ring on the Traeger grill than than some Hollywood starlet. <laughs> I think I think yeah. honestly, if you were to throw one out there just off the top of my head. Probably like Margot Robbie. She might be married. Who knows? Don't know the don't know the details. But don't know the details. They, but they seem it. like that's you know call. they are attractive people, and they would you know create more charger attractive charger fans. That's a good thing. <laughs> good thing All right. You. Good answer. I like the question. Great. Yeah, it's a good answer. Yeah. So it, it's a great. It's a very unique question. We've <laughs> not been asked. Your own answer. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but no Kardashians, for the love of God, please. Yeah, no, let's God. let's stay away from that family. All right. Thank you, Jay Walt. Uh, we move on now to Aaron, a.k.a. Vrabel56, who asked the question, How do you guys like tailgating? Relaxed with a slow barbecue and sipping on some beers? Crazy doing beer bongs, beer pong, and shots? We used to combine the two when we had five hours at the queue, but with four <laughs> hours, which is really two and a half with set up teardown, <laughs> we end up going hard with the fun. <laughs> Dude, Your that's, voice for that was perfect. That was good. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, With the tear down. It's tear down. <laughs> it's dangerous to go hard in the paint before a football game. I know. Kevin, like, I will not allow. I, it's it's not he a good. I like to watch game. football. Yeah. I, like what yeah. sucks is you're trying to you're trying to beat that fifteen dollar beer that you don't want to pay for. For but sure, it's right. not always a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Pace yourself yeah. before you wreck yourself. I would is what say you're in my like <laughs> early twenties, it was like let's party, and then r- as of late going to games, it's like <laughs> let's kind of take it easy. <laughs> let's Whoa, walk now, in. guys. Hey. Let's make sure we all drink some water. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have your water yet? Did you have your water yet? Okay. Be sure to hydrate. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But that we're doesn't all, mean we won't. All, yeah. 
If we're all kind of in that relaxed, slow barbecue, sipping on some beer. Yeah. That is the phase of life I think that we are in right now. But yes. We are going to a few games. Don't tempt us with a good time, though. (laughs) Don't you do it. (laughs) None of us are good with uh, being challenged to things, so it's up to you. And we are very easily swayed. We're just just a group of goofy buttholes. (laughs) You never know what could happen. I don't know who decided to give us a show. (laughs) (laughs) They might be canceling us after this. Sorry to our new sponsors. (laughs) Sorry, I did Minute Media. Potential. Uh, <laughs> we love you. We thank you for everything. Uh, we next, we good. move on to V Reddit 123, who asked the question. Championships. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. Let, let's uh, let's question more comment, but I think you I think you're on to something. You're on the right track for yeah. sure. I think we know. I think we know what he would draft in the first round. Yeah, a quarterback. Def- yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going Obviously. defense. Yeah. All right, that's the point. Well, great statement. V Reddit one twenty three. Thank I, you for. I complete- by the way, I completely agree. You saw sure. what Tampa Bay did. Absolutely. Yeah, they had Tom Brady, but they also had the best defense, and that's what won the game. Kevin, I would say, probably disagrees with you and wants to score eighty points. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. The question back then was, "What would you rather have?" <laughs> I like to watch the offensive football. I, that's why I said that. I'm not saying that's how you win championships. That's not how the question was phrased, mm. Kyle. He's looking for so, loopholes. So I'm to, looking at you, to, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> to wrap it up, Kyle. <laughs> to wrap it up, you don't like championships. You don't like watching championships. Way to turn that into something that wasn't Kyle. <laughs> this is so weird. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, V Reddit. Uh, we move on now to Wade Mix, who asked the question: Will we see an increase or <laughs> decrease in production from Bosa with the Departure of Melvin Ingram and his new system, Spock. <laughs> I don't. I personally don't think that anyone affects Bosa's production. No. Um, if anything, he's going to help everyone else. He's going to get the double team. He's going to get the focus. He's the scouting report. Melvin Ingram for the last couple of years is not the scouting report. He's benefited from Joey Bosa being the target. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's been able to be that extra guy. Um, so I don't think Bosa's production changes. If anything, it'll get better because he has a coach that's that's willing to 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 move him around a little bit more, mm-hmm. um, and he's going to be put in different places and create mismatches, which is what Staley's consistently said. Um, and Coach Staley wants to take chances. That's that's the Gus Bradley's conservative. He's going to run this. You know he's going to run it. And he's hoping to execute better. Coach Staley's going to put guys in spots that maybe aren't extremely comfortable. Because it's a chance to make a big play, mm-hmm. um, so I think that I think his production is only going to go up. And there's still no Melvin Ingram. Technically, ha- just hasn't left fully yet. He might still go. He's back. just out in limbo. Melvin. Yeah, he's in. Yeah, limbo. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. But uh, great answer uh, there, Coach. And thank you, Wade Mix, for asking the question. We move on down to Mark, aka Mark M three, who asked the question. What do you see TT doing with the rest of our spending money? My current idea is that he will go through the draft and try to fill holes that he didn't in the draft. I, was, I like that voice. A lot. Yes! <laughs> that voice saying fill holes. Fill is a this creepy, hole, yeah. you goofy butthole! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. oh, oh man. shit! Uh, uh, it, to answer the question, yes, yeah, you're on the money. We'll find out what yep. we need, and then we'll either sign some defensive players or we'll pick up some some tackles. You know, we'll we'll see what happens. But it's a, definitely the yeah. free agency has frozen. There's nothing happening until after the draft, and then we'll see what we yeah. need to pick up. Something interesting that Coach Daly said, too, in his interview was he, he talked about how you get a player. One is through the draft, one's free agency. He also said trades. Mm-hmm. I never considered 
a trade as an option for getting a player at this point. Usually you see that like mid-season, like how we got rid of Desmond King. You trade to pick up a guy if you're playing well. Um, but who knows if you don't see some kind of a trade happen based on, hey, a, a Alabama wide receiver that Kevin really doesn't want falls to us. Don't want him. And another top receiver on our team becomes somewhat expendable. Could you trade him and pick up something big? So there's a lot of things that are still going to happen before um, football starts. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I have no idea how it's going to go, and I'm excited to see what happens. Agreed. Big time. I concur. I concur, sir. I concur. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mark. We move on down to Touch of Phallus. Yay! <laughs> Who asks He's a back. question? Now, I don't know about you fellas, but I could barely contain my erection listening to Staley's presser. Who needs Viagra when you have that guy talking money, star, and edge? I'd like to hear Coach's thoughts on Tillery after his slander in weeks gone now that Staley has ironed out a definitive role for him as an IDL, using his length and girth against stumpy guards. Could it be that all Tillery needed was direction and a solid off-season, which he hasn't had due to injury and COVID? He calls you out, coach. Touch of foul. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in hot. Coming. I need to gather my thoughts after listening to Adam's <laughs> voice. I, like, <laughs> that voice with that question. I could not contain for- my erection. <laughs> Oh, Everybody, um, look at this. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I hope that I'm the fool of all of my comments on this podcast. Me too. I hope that Trey Pip. <laughs> I, I hope that I hope that Trey Pipkins is a Pro Bowler. I hope that Jerry Tillery is an All Pro. I hope, like, I I pray <laughs> that I am wrong in all of these things, um, and maybe that's the case. Maybe he needed a solid off season. He came in his rookie year un- unprepared, didn't know what to expect, had a bad year. Last year didn't have an off season. Um, I'm hoping that that's the case. I I really do. Like, we're shamelessly positive Charger fans. I hope that he is great. And it sounds like from our coach, who knows a lot more about football than I do. Um, is very excited about him. So that that honestly, that got me excited. That didn't make me think, oh man, I had a bad take. I'm like, oh hell yeah, let's go, Jerry Tillery. <laughs> you know, like it got me hyped up. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping that I'm way off. And I hope that he he does a great job. Me too. Fingers Shut are. Shut up. You don't have to keep saying that. <laughs> Absolutely <Kevin>. crossed. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Touch of Phallus, for getting us all hot and bothered. We move Thanks, on now dude. to <laughs> D Jeebs. Who asked the question? I know it's a long shot, but are you guys going to be at the stadium on April 24th? Also, you guys gonna come out with some merch? K, love you, bye. Oh, yeah. And f- <laughs> the Raiders. <laughs> K, love you, bye. Again. <laughs> if you know the movie you'd like to watch, Press one now. <laughs> Kyle, why, don't you, why don't you take the first me. one? You're the I I I want to go the 24th. I will not be able to be in town. Are you going? Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to make it on April 24th. Loser. I'm actually. I'm, <laughs> I don't like that, Kevin. I don't like that. You're the loser that moved to Kansas City. Loser. No, I didn't move to Kansas City. I moved to Columbia. <laughs> Kansas City moved different. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep calm. Um, you got shit on no. me. I'm really sad. That's I'm going out of town on the 23rd. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to be. We're going to live vicariously like through everyone's social media posts because I cannot wait to see the inside of that. Inside but of it that is going to make. I. I like. I was. I'm. I'm really bummed that I can't go. And obviously, if I was in town, I would go. But it also makes that first game that we go to. Mm, I feel like just that much sweeter, baby. Mm, it makes mm. me just so much even more excited <laughs> to go on that first preseason game that we get to go to. Yes, so, totally. um, I hope you guys have an awesome time. And please post everything Take that you see so we can. Yeah. 
yeah so we can be a part of it but uh, on yeah, that I'm on that second aware. one we're working on it if you guys want if you guys want some charger chat merch and uh, <laughs> let us know well we're working on it and we'll try and get you guys some stuff yeah, we're we, we are working on it so we're, we're trying to at least make it available but more of you that uh show at least an interest in it we can definitely put it in some bigger orders faster <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so awesome thank you D Jeebs uh, for asking the question. We move on now. One. That was a great question. Uh, we move on now to WPG Charger, who asked the question. What are your thoughts on Staley's press conference this past week, particularly his emphasis is, is, is on having tackles, <laughs> edge rushers, and corners are not uh, uh, left tackle, left, right, left, right tackles, etc. I think the interesting thing that he was talking about was just like the importance of having good people in general, right? I think that in terms of the tackles right. and not necessarily, I think the question was, do you care if somebody is a guard that will bump out or vice versa? He's just like, we just want good players at those positions. You know what I mean? I think he also, he did talk about like left tackle might not always play left tackle, might end up playing right tackle. Cause he was talking about the edge rushers, you know, yeah. like Khalil Mack and stuff like that. Like, Got to be. They, gotta, they don't pick a side. Like you they can be come good, from either, either side. Either right or left. You got to be good. It's exactly. not like old football where you just you know send them on the quarterback's blind side. It's like you're gonna. They're coming from everywhere. So you right. got to be right tackle's got to be as good as your left tackle. Exactly. It also did bring up. I wanted to bring this up when we were talking about the interview, and I forgot um, something that that uh, Coach Daly brought up a lot was people's story. He kept saying like they have a good story. They have a great story. Mm-hmm. This guy's story like. The idea that somehow that their background and how they got to where they are is an indicator for how successful they will be. That's an interesting point. Um, it, he kept saying, like, this guy's a great, great talent, did this and that, and he has also has an has a great story. Um, you just you see a little bit into the Chargers caring about um character mm-hmm. and background and who they are off the field and how they got to where they are. So um I think that there's so many things that go in like Man, I can't even imagine the stress and trying to decide who you're going to draft mm-hmm. and not even knowing who's going to be available until day of. I do these mock drafts and I get scared. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't even mean anything. So, yeah, I don't, there's so many different things that go into this. Um, I don't, I don't know from Staley's press conference, I think we got a glimmer into what they're looking for and what they're looking at, but I don't think you could take away from it a specific who they're going to pick. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you, WPG Charger. Appreciate the question. We move on to Tony Salazar, who asks a question. You guys, Padre fans. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to have 100% <laughs> Padre fans. I know yeah. it's, 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 it, it's, it was it's nervous to pledge allegiance with the, the split of Charger fans, but yeah, if you're going to Given ask our me, history, I'm I think people definitely can... Definitely a Padre fan. Understand, because, and I mean, the big news... Well, no who, hitter. Who, yeah, the Musgrove's first no, no hitter, hitter in Padre's Finally. history. Can't Finally. not talk about it. I know. Like, that's so huge. Like, what but an amazing... We but we event. won't talk about it too much, because I'm sure there's a lot of Dodger fans on here. So That's okay. It was awesome. But As yeah, we can all rally around the Chargers together. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We're shamelessly exactly. positive, Shamelessly folks. positive. <laughs> but we are... Padre fans. There you yeah. go. And we love Padre fans, too. <laughs> fans of all shapes and sizes. Yes, Thank you, <laughs> Tony <laughs> Salazar, for asking the question. We move on to the Chargers nerd who asked the question. And he <laughs> made a request, so God bless. Good luck, folks. <laughs> hey, God, Brian. If you were to choose a current Chargers player to add to Chargers canon, besides Bosa and Allen, who would it be? Keeping in mind that both James and Herbert have only really played one season each. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I am so sorry, Rob Paulson. I am not good. used to I doing was, a pinky. I love the uh, pinky. That was good. But he and then he made a request for an answer. So, well, pinky, if I had to choose, who should be in Chargers canon? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Herbert, it, already one season it, in. Yep. It might. Yep. I told to you I'm getting my tattoo it? ready. It's an yeah. obvious answer. It might be premature, Pinky, but I think 
Herbert is the way to go. Yes. <laughs> it is hard, man. I feel like outside of Bosa and Keenan Allen, like the tenure on the team is is pretty minimal. Yeah. Um, so one great year is pretty close to <laughs> the best. He's, at the, top. He's at the top already. Um, to me, like trying to project out and what they've done so far and like the story behind it, I, I think Austin Eckler could potentially be um, an eventual Charger Cannon uh, candidate. That's a good call. Um, being an undrafted guy, he's now worked his way and he's become an absolute playmaker, signed his big contract. And he, he has not lost any fire for um, mm. playing football. Um, that's outside of Justin Herbert. I think I would, I would, I would push for Austin Eckler. Yeah, I would too. I would too, Pinky. All right. Thank you, Chargers nerd. We move on to Con Yeezy, 96, who asked the question. What up, riders? The sun was <laughs> shining on my tan toes brighter than ever. And it got me thinking. <laughs> Rivers announced he was signing a one-day contract in March to retire a Charger. Hey, whoa, what happened? I'm a tad bit big, so I can't think of anything better to say or ask. Anyways, bolt up, brothers. The ocean's calling my name. Can't love you, bye. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, shit. What happened with that? I thought we were going to lock him in. I think they're waiting for another, like, the 17th day of the month somewhere in here. Like, Maybe. Just to, I, I, I feel like know. LT didn't sign his contract until. Well, he went yeah, He went so I, in New York and then came back. But, you know. Well, he, he came back. He for signed the one a day, one day it contract. It was pretty quick afterwards. No, I, I, I just, I didn't know. I didn't remember either. I just Google searched it and it says June 19th. Yeah. So huh. when he did it. LT didn't sign it until June. It's possible that Philip won't sign his until June, but yeah, it felt like, yeah. I don't know if it was a rumor or if there was like an actual date set for Philip to come sign in March, but yeah, I, I don't know what happened there either. Kind as long of as they get it done before high school two days, they'll be fine. Yeah, you're gonna that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably, he has spring ball right now, so he couldn't come he's now. He's hard in preparation for some small yeah, local he's in, high school it's football important. He's in, he's in hardcore spring ball, Alabama football. So, He'll have to wait until, um, yeah, June sounds like the right time. Sounds so like it, a there's a little, time. or two week gap in July there where you have, you have off days. It'll be good yeah, weather. He'll be out here. Good weather. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Kanye Easy. Always good to hear from you. We move on to Pyro KM47, who asked the question Croiky, are you guys setting up a Charger Chat tailgate for the season opener or what? I'll bring the first 24 pack. Ask. Bolt fam. Oh, never mind. I can't love you, boy. I'm going to go <laughs> shove my thumb in this gator's butthole. Uh, I am so sad to say that I'm probably not going to be start making it till games until like October. Oh, dear. Yeah. So, Kyle, well, you're, you're going, you're going to be there. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be there. Um, I don't, we don't have, we don't have rule like the, we haven't figured it out full, yet. Who's, when's well, going? We haven't who's been going. given full details on parking and tailgating and all that yet from our, right. um, from our people at the Chargers. So once that's done, yeah, absolutely. Once I figure out where we're going to be and who's going to be there and when Adam's going to come out. Well, mm -hmm. dog, if Kevin's not going to be there week one, you but sure shit better be there. Believe me, I, as I just need to see a schedule. Like as soon as I, I got a schedule. Come out. Yeah. yeah, I just got bummed the fuck out with that. That kind of made yeah. me sad. Well, We'll get you one of those robots you can control around. <laughs> He's just being <laughs> tailgated like a robot iPad head. He's just like, yeah. hey, yeah. guys, let's I'm play. Hey. Pour can... that shot down my throat. Ah. Everyone can COVID-free give you hugs. And there you go. Them. I'll be hugging and just like bumping hugging into everybody. people. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, but, but thank you, Pyro. When we, when we all get together, we are going to do something special when we're yeah, all we'll there be for the first time. We'll well, let that, yeah, know. maybe a post game, something or other at a, some restaurant or something. We'll do something. We'll that get would something. be we'll get that something would be great. Yeah. Thank you, Pyro KM forty seven. We move on now to Okie Doggy, who asked the question. 
<laughs> I have two-part question for you boys. First part, which player that we ended up losing in free agency do you guys wish to play well for their new team as long as it doesn't show up against our team? The second part, which I think I will love to hear from you the most, which player that is currently in your roster but had a terrible 2020 season all around do you see bouncing back this upcoming season? I just want to see who and why you guys think a specific player would have a bounce back season and see if you guys agree or disagree. It would be fun to see if there is any chaos that comes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> a good one. All right, I'll do rapid fire quick. So I got offense. Bulaga is going to come back stronger than ever. Nice. And I would like to see Isaac Rochelle do really well as a pass rusher in Indy. Nice. Just because. Good answer. I like that. I li- I've been, I followed him so much during that, like, Walt, the yeah, yeah. man of the year thing. I'm like, I like him. He's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want uh, Bud Heavy to do really good. That guy guy's gotten so much crap from all of us Charger worst fans. Worst center in the, the league. The worst center. In the- guy's not a center. He stepped up and made. <laughs> He's not a his- center. <laughs> 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 um, so I, I really hope Bud Heavy has has a great year. Um, and then for our turnaround, I think I think as we talked about earlier, I think Nas, who had a very questionable rookie season, um, we'll call it quote unquote rookie season. Um, I think he's I think he's gonna have a bounce back. I think he's gonna play a lot better. I'm trying to think about this. As far as uh player, I mean he hasn't signed with a team yet, so it kind of remains to be seen. But I'll 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 say I hope Casey Hayward has a good se- season wherever he ends up playing. Hope I mean if he does, I mean honestly, it's, it's nothing <laughs> nothing set in stone yet for Casey, but wherever he lands, I hope he does really well. Um and as far as guys on our team that had a terrible 2020 season, oosh. Uh, you know what? I'll say um I'll say KJ Hill. I'd like to see him actually make a presence for himself on this team and and prove why we drafted him in the first place. So, um, yeah, good one, good call. No go. one said Hunter Henry though. No, because no. he's a patriot. Damn <laughs> that. <laughs> That's what he was. That hurt so much, man. Was hoping for. Yeah, God, Chaos. Kim. <laughs> I thought about it today. It's just like, God damn it, like. Fuck him like because i watched <laughs> another places, hunter i watched another highlight video it's just like you jerk <laughs> i don't care you goofy butthole you don't oh, know he's not goofy he's a just stinky a butthole, butthole. <laughs> just a butt- <laughs> oh my god all right all right let's move on thank you okie doggy for <laughs> setting the fire in me now we move on to <clears throat> Greg C. Good old Greg C. Who asks a question. Disregarding pick position, which of any defensive line slash linebacker makes you salivate when imagining being paired with Bosa? Um, good question. I just want to see Joey Bosa play. I think anyone you put across from him is going to be like, bring Melvin Ingram back. Bring in... Um, Uchin and Wosu. Anyone you put a, a with Kenneth him Murray is get, Kenneth Murray is going to yeah. kill. Like Joey Bosa is just Tranquil. that game changer. So like, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't know. With I guess with the question of being who do you pair with Joey Bosa, bring him on. Put somebody out there, and they're they're going to be better when they're on the field with Joey <laughs> right. Bosa. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I that, that's one of the positions that I. I mean, I don't. Not many of us have been looking you know, outside of like the top ones, like Micah Parsons and stuff like that, that, you know, we feel that's another position that I think we feel pretty stacked up uh, in that linebacker position that, you know, we might pick another one up, but like, if we do, it doesn't feel like it's a major need. And boy, once you get past that fourth pick, man, it's hard for us to be like researching <laughs> the right players now, that we're are way so low down. Into corner and tackle that right. that's kind of like life right now exactly so a- anybody that gets on the other side is is gonna probably gonna have a good time yeah so thank you greg c we move on to the glorious end who makes a request for a repeat character that i don't do well but he's coming back he goes like this pinky 
I was wondering if you think drafting Tevin Jenkins at 13, if Sewell and Slater are gone, is a better choice than picking Derisaw. Belaga can't play forever, and worst case scenario is you end up with a high caliber right tackle if he doesn't do well on the left side. World football domination can only be achieved through effort and will, Pinky, which Jenkins shows in spades on film, and Derasa tends to take plays off. Tell me, Pinky. Tell me what you think. K, love you, bye. Uh, credit for the idea goes to Brentley Weissman, former NFL scout. <laughs> um, oh man, that's a good question. Like, yeah, I, I, te- I, okay. So, right tackles are great. You can get a stud right tackle in the second, third round. It, it's all about draft value, and the value isn't there for a right tackle at thirteen overall. If we trade back and we end up in the low twenties, and we pick up another second round pick, um, and a guy like Tevin Jenkins is there, I, I think it's a solid. I think it's an okay pick. I, at 13, to pick a guy that everyone is projecting to be a right tackle, that's a reach. I just don't think the draft value is there for Tevin Jenkins at 13. That's got to be a guy, that left tackle, a corner, an edge rusher, uh, uh, something that's going to have like that that high that high draft value that you can't get later in later rounds. I really yeah. think it's going to be the the Derisaw ceiling. Like as soon as we get to the Derisaw of tackles, that's the reach. That's the farthest of reach. If we're still at thirteen and that's the last one available, that's when you really start to consider other options. Like I don't think you're right. pulling. You're you're going back. You're getting more picks. I agree with you. Well, there you go, Pinky. Yes. All right. Moving on. Thank you, Glorious End. Uh, to see Densley eleven, who asked the question. Who do you think will be our defensive quarterback, a.k.a. the green dot guy who gets the mic in their helmet to receive the defensive calls? With the Rams, Staley appointed John Johnson as their signal caller instead of a linebacker. Wasn't it? Tell me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it Tranquil when he was out there the previous year? Wasn't he running the show? (laughs) I don't remember, but that would be my pick. I would yeah. say it's either going to be Derwin James or Drew Tranquil. Derwin has to play so many positions. He better have a pretty damn good grasp on no, the what's defense. going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's I think it's either going to be Derwin James or Drew Tranquil. Drew is a leader. He's already talked about the presence that he carries and he he's he's a cerebral guy. He has to know what's going on. So mm-hmm. um but that's why the linebacker usually has it, is because they they're familiar with what the defensive line's doing, because that's gonna f- affect their run fits. And they also have to be aware of what the, the coverage is the, the secondary is doing because they have to fit into coverage. So that's why usually a linebacker has the dot for communication because they can talk to both. Um, but I could see a Derwin James type uh, being able to do something like they did with John Johnson um, on the Rams. But I I don't know why. You, if you don't have to go outside of linebacker, I don't see why you do. So I think Drew Tranquil is going to have the dot. There you go. Drew Tranquil calling it. Thank you, C. Densley. Always good to hear from you. We move on to Chimney Crickets. Hey. Who asked the question? Hey, Chimney. Ball predictions on record for this season pre-draft with our current roster. I'll ask again post-draft and see if there's any changes. Give me a best. Georgia, Southern pastor, a police. <laughs> I honestly think, you know, we're 11 and 6, weird to say, or 12 and 5, <laughs> also weird to say, team next year. <laughs> um, uh, that's so weird. I'm going to have to get used to that, that odd number. That's not right in my brain yet. But it is, yeah. I, I, that's where I feel like we are right now. And I, uh, that's, that's really, I'm, I'm going to be shamelessly positive. It might even get higher after the draft once I get excited and start watching all these <laughs> highlight films of all the guys we picked up. But right now, I'd say, I'd say 12 and 5. That's my, that's my, Final pre-draft answer. Good answer. I would say, yeah, I'm in that um, 11 and 6. Man, I don't even know how to do this math. 11 and 6 <laughs> or 10 and 7. I think I think 11 and 6 gets you in the playoffs. You should be 10 and you're in. Um, 10 wins and you're in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think it's 11 and 6 or 10 and 7. I think that's kind of where we're at. We're, we're that, I don't, I don't, I don't see us where we're at right now. Like we could contend for the AFC West, but I think that we still have some pieces that I need to see where they fall before I say um, we're we're the top team in the AFC West and and we're going to the ship. I think there's a, there's just there's big spots that need to get filled. For sure, eleven's the new ten, huh? Nice. Yeah, I think eleven and six. That's my call. I'll 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 say twelve. 
I'll say 12 and 5. Yeah, high five. five. High five. Cute. <laughs> There's so much to not know about this that you could easily go like, well, this is all just going to blow up in our faces and oh well. Like <laughs> it was just a rough season, but I welcome I, it. I I, I'd like to. I'd like to think this is going to go the right way. So, if, yeah, if we're going real bolt prediction, seventeen and zero, baby. Yeah, baby. Of course, go pre-draft. So, that's easy. Get, if we can change, we it never after get it the right. Draft. Anyways, hold on. I'm yeah. resetting it. Resetting. It. If we can change it after the draft, right now, seventeen and zero, baby. Yeah, cut this out. Cut I, this out. Seventeen and zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say. I'm going to say twelve and five, and then post-draft, we're going to have all our holes filled. Everything's going to be fine. So that'll be seventeen and zero. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all all right. Thank you, Chimney. Always good to hear from you. Uh, next, we move on to Scott Rydelsky, who asked the question. God, this uh, this is going to be terrible. I'm telling you right now, Scott, I'm I, it's staying in my wheelhouse, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to give him my all. I'm going to go for the gusto. It goes something like this. What Chargers player do you feel their fantasy football value has risen by the moves made this offseason? Staley schemes. Oh, God. Sorry, Scott. Scaly scheme claims to play to their players' strengths. So give me your thoughts on who will reap those benefits in those fantasy leagues. Oh, God. That is so bad, Scott. How dare you ask me to do a voice That's that I can't just like do? Peter Griffin. Shut what your are you mouth! About? Don't you pander to me, perfect. you jerk! I think Scott, ooh, I'm coming well, for you. You miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take, Adam. God. Yeah, um, yeah, but the offseason move, the free agency moves we made was off of the blind. So obviously, the guy is Justin Herbert. That's the guy that benefits most. Um, I think that value of him goes up significantly. In, in fantasy same teams. same absolutely can be said for Austin Eckler and the yeah. new coaching staff and the bigger stronger the thing is what's going to be so fun is no one is going to be able to find Austin Eckler behind all these six foot five guards That's it's impossible true. he'll be able yeah. to go wherever he wants because no one yeah. will be able to see him yeah I think Austin Eckler is going to have the biggest leap I mean just I mean number one having a healthy season losing him right. partway through the season last year already wrecked his fantasy value I know I drafted him um <laughs> <laughs> but now with this new offensive line and being able to work with all these new everything, I think I think Austin Eckler is the, the one to vote for. And I will draft him again. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you take him from me. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Scott. All right. Sad Chargers fan. Well, question. Sad, how do we make you happy, Chargers fan? Yeah, I've what do we got to do? What, what, do we, what do we need, Sad Chargers fan? How do we make you happy, man? Just yeah. let us know. Uh, well... <laughs> Deshaun Watson knows how. (laughs) Cut that out or. (laughs) Damn. Spicy. I I think we leave it in. We might leave it in. (laughs) Everybody's going to hear us going, I don't know. Do we leave it in? I don't know. We All right, sad chargers. They'll, fan. they'll only hear that if we leave it in. <laughs> All right, sad chargers fan. You get uh, you have a question. <laughs> that was yes. good, Kyle. That was a good, good one, actually. That was a good slow burn afterwards. <laughs> All right, here we go. Will last year's IR rules still be in play this season? God knows we need short-term IR and be able to bring back more than two players in a given season. I I'm wish they so would just very sad. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would just adopt this in general. I I, I like this this new IR yeah, why position they? they created last year. I like it. It's like you know you well, don't. It's have supposed to... to be like if a guy tests positive or something happens like that with COVID that you have. I mean, it's not going to be eradicated by that point. So. I right. think the so possibility then, is still going to be there. It, it, yeah, it could but still be general, there. But in general, I kind of like it. It's it's helpful so you don't general. lose your you, you don't lose your like star player, you know, because he's on the cusp of maybe coming back for the last couple games. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's I, I don't know. That's just me. Uh, we we haven't heard officially one way or the other Sad Chargers fan, but if it were up to us, keep it going. Keep it in. Keep it rolling. Thank you for asking the question. We move now to Pliny uh, who asked the question? Wow, waffles or pancakes? On wow. three, on three, we all say it at the same time. Ready? One, okay. two, 
three. Pancake. Waffles! Pancakes. Ooh, the Duggan <laughs> pancake DNA. Yeah. The, the waffles and the pancakes are going to meet in the alley. We're going to be snapping our when fingers. You're a, when, when you're, you're a, a waffle, you're a waffle. <laughs> all the way from your first dollop of syrup to your last. Okay. Shit. I think part of it was Kevin and I were both linemen in Pop Warner, so those pancakes are are treasured. Ah, yeah, they were rewarded. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Nom, nom, nom. Pancake, the pancake brunch, Stop lunch it. thing. It was so, nom, nom, You're hungry. making me hungry. Pancake. Stop it. Pancake blocks, pancake breakfast, pancake. Pancake galamode. Oh, pancakes. Boiled pancake. <laughs> lemon pancake. <laughs> pancake. Barbecue pancake. pancake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Pliny. Uh, we move on now to <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> Who asked the question? The amount of questions that we have is <laughs> insane. I love it. All right. Keep going, Adam. Here we go. Well, 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 Clarice. When do we start blaming Telesco for the failures of the team? We've blamed both coaches, owner, and players. <laughs> but when does Tom get his share? His draft to develop and re-sign philosophy isn't working. His coaches have sucked at the end. And he brings in older and injured players. Dead Cap has been good for us because he keeps the players he signs even though they suck. He doesn't cut anybody. <laughs> plays them because he pays them even though there are better and younger options on the team. Now I may be talking out of my ass, but as a regular fan, this is what I've noticed. Love the pod. I just want to say you're not being very shamelessly positive right now about the <laughs> yeah. situation. I, I, I think the person in the whole organization that's the easiest to be shamelessly positive about is the GM. Like you can find so many excuses like and you, reasons to be but, okay with but it. But Keenan Allen. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. wait. But DJ Fluker. But, but, but Keen, Keenan but, Allen. Yeah. Justin but Herbert. Justin Herbert. You know, uh, right? Trey Pipkins. Uh, but Justin Herbert. <laughs> yeah. huh. it, it's just the, it's the one guy that you can choose whether you want to be, yeah. like, find excuses for him or not. And we've chosen to find excuses and for him. And you make some good sure. points about yeah, bringing no, in great some, points. Yeah. He's, he's, Your he's, points are valid, dude. He's yeah. coupon Tommy, right? He's, right. He, yep. That's what he does. So he's bringing in guys that maybe are at the tail end of some of their careers from certain situations, and he's that's just his style. So, yeah, I feel you, but let's get you a little more shamelessly positive. Let's see what this next season does. Let's see what you, Staley does with this team, yeah. with these coaches, before we make any final decisions. But we get where you're coming from and yeah, totally dude, understandable. And yeah, we're all Charger fans, and, dude. We, we, hey, we, we all cut, feel it. <laughs> we cut a lot of our players, didn't re sign them. We brought in a whole new coaching staff. So now, if it doesn't get done, it can really only land on one person. So there you yeah, go. He's, he's kind of putting his neck out there for sure. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thank you, unanimous. Uh, we move on to Daniel Wallen, who asked the question Stupid question. But are you guys excited? For or not excited for a 17 game season and all its implications. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> he must have friends. Stupid I, is as stupid does. I couldn't be more excited about it. <laughs> Calm down, Batman. I, like, I could not be more excited about an extra meaningful game. Like, I love that. I do. I know it's harder for everybody. Yeah, we know involved. Kyle doesn't love that. Oh no! I just I tried to of think it. of I tried to think of the Super like scared. some of the counterpoints, some of the the things that aren't great about it. Um, as a fan, and only a fan, yeah, I would rather watch a regular season game than a preseason game. Mm -hmm. um, but I never found anything wrong with sixteen games. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't you know. Know what's, like, know what's wrong with sixteen games? It's not, it's not seventeen, 17. Games. Yeah, 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 that's what's wrong with it. And we all know you, they changed it to seventeen. <laughs> We all yeah. know they changed it to 17 because For of Philip Phil. Rivers. Yeah. 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 He retires and they change it to 17 it, games. In honor of him. Wow. Of him. Is there a yeah. conspiracy right. here, guys? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Daniel, for posing Ooh. the question. <laughs> we move on to Gnarly Ray Jepsen, who asked the question. Who is a non-previous charger that you wish they could have signed in free agency if some money was right? Personally, for me, Yannick Ngaku, dude is a beast and would crash an O-line with Bosa and completely disrupt any offense. 
also would be a threat by himself if Bolsa has an injury. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh like the, that's like the beer fest Germans. Yeah. Oh, guten Tag. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, for me, there's two guys. One guy because he went to the Broncos, and that's Kyle Fuller. Um, that yeah. corner, it would have been pretty shut down for us. That would have been really exciting um, and would have made uh, who we take in the first really, really easy for us. Um, the other was John Johnson. I just love yeah. the idea of bringing that safety in who had a breakout year to play with his old coach to see what he could do for the Chargers. Um, those are two of the guys that I was really, really hoping um, that we could sign. Because there was no, like, tackle that I was super pumped about. Um, we Like, I feel like th- those that was just the other big hole in our, our team that I really wanted to see them fill mm-hmm. um, in free agency. I, I think you hit them both. I think Fuller and John Johnson. I, I don't know that there's any other guys that were that well, quite had the same amount of hype behind I, them that we were I hoping was excited. For. Like there was that inkling in time where Von Miller may have been an option. Like yeah. that was just exciting for me because then you have Von Miller is, is such a just a dominant player and he's been for mm-hmm. so long. Like having him and Bosa on the same line is just would have been scary. Mm-hmm. Just that that was mine, but yeah, can't have I, that I no think more. no, you can't have that no more. I mean the the with Kyle Fuller and John Johnson, we were like. Oh, but they know he knows Staley. Like they know Staley, and they like working for him. This could happen, and then it didn't. No, no it definitely just, didn't. No, it let all the air out of the balloon. So, um, all right. Well, thank you, Gnarly Ray, for asking the question. And finally, Oof. oh my God, we finished this bolt <laughs> fam on a final question. It better be a good one, and he better have a great name. It comes from sucking on a dum dum. <laughs> What a way to go out. Sucking on a dum-dum, asking the final question of Ask Bolt Fam, and it goes something like this. Who would we pick in the seventh round? Good. I'm not the person to answer that. Who's going to be there? I don't know. <laughs> offensive tackle at 13, baby. <laughs> offensive yeah. tackle there That's where we're going to get our starter right Back there. Back up, baby. Yeah, yeah, Done deal. Yeah, yeah. Good question, dude. That, that personifies how I feel about a lot of the draft talk, because... God, some people have the answer Man, for who we're picking we in the seventh. No, BS. We don't know who we're picking 13 picks in. You're, <laughs> you're, because we don't know what the other 12 going in front of us are. Exactly. Yeah. You're telling me, you know, seventh <laughs> round who's going to be available? There's was, no way. That's yeah. a good question, man. Great it's, question. I love it. Please, yeah. Let me hear what you guys think. Yeah. That's our round seventh pick. round who's pick. Who's, be? Yeah, who's going to, you know... Put the put the Babe Ruth bat to the fences and go. I know who we're gonna pick seventh round, dude. Yeah. I wonder what drop that, a name. Best name, best name in the draft. That's all wonder I, if they have a be bet a like name. that in Vegas where you could like oh, do that. Mr. Irrelevant, trillion last, dollars. Last pick. Yeah, wow. Mr. Irrelevant's always there, but picking the, the seventh round for a particular crazy. team. Yeah, it's gonna be epic. Wild. Epic. All right. Wow, folks. <sighs> Goodness it. gracious, it's midnight here for one of us. <laughs> we're all in different time zones so yeah uh, one o'clock for one another. o'clock for mr huggin yeah and a easy 11 for kyle the coach duggan so man i can't believe we made it through thank you all for joining us for our first ever video podcast i hope you enjoyed it i hope you come back for more i hope i didn't <laughs> scare you all away uh because lord knows i would be but um, thank you again, all of you for joining. Thank you all for supporting us. Thank you to fan sided and minute media for, you know, picking us up. That's such a huge yep. thing for us. We are so thankful for that. Um, and join us next week folks. Uh, but always don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. K love you. Bye. K love you. Bye. K love you. Bye. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hey, Billy, what are you playing with? It's my goofy butthole. Whoa, way cool. Goofy buttholes are fun for the whole family. You can throw it, bounce it, stretch it, twist it, poke it, prank your sister with it, put it in your dad's coffee. Also get the Goofy Butthole Hovercraft playset. Goofy buttholes come in different colors, sizes, and playsets. Playsets and figures each sold separately. Batteries not included. Coming soon from Charger Chat.